my way or the highway. So anybody wants to walk, do it now. Hey, everybody, we're all gonna get laid. And again, it's picked up. It's Darius Leonard, a pick six for the Maniac. Touchdown, I-N-D-Y. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, oh the chicken. Double time. John, I have never been better to be on the air with you here in Indianapolis, a place where so many of my dreams have come true. The Ride with JMV on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. All right, I have a hell of an idea for you. You get to Greenwood right here. Just off of County Line Road is our first Bud Light Blue Friday of the 2023 season, and we are staked out at Twin Peaks in Greenwood, and I have an absolute overloaded show for you from a variety of angles because, honestly, there is so much going on. But before I get started with the nuts and the bolts of talking sports and all that, I want to remind you this first Bud Light Blue Friday – we have, I believe, seven to eight pair of Jaguars Colts tickets to give away. Of course, that is the home opener for the Colts and the debut of Anthony Richardson. We have a ton to give away down here. So join us. I'll be here, in fact, until seven. I've got to do Colts happy hour coming up in the six o'clock hour. But we'll be giving these away between three and six. So get here. Get signed up. And, again, it's a Bud Light Blue Friday. Love the fact that they're back, and we're going to be here throughout the course of the afternoon getting you set. If you don't have tickets, I mean, this is a hell of an opportunity to come by and get yourself some tickets for that as well. And I loved it last time I sat out here. Now, it was a little bit different atmosphere. I mean, it was on a Monday, right, and it was like 95 degrees when we were sitting out here. I was just talking to Engineer Dev about that, too. We were sitting out here. It was like 95 degrees, a little bit different. It is a nice afternoon to hang outside. That's where we are. Uh, ice cold Bud Light is flowing right now, too. The great food that they have here as well. Uh, that is really synonymous, Twin Peaks is, with scratch food and great food. So join us out here, and then maybe in the process, take home some tickets for that home opener. And be a part of it, too. The debut of Anthony Richardson in week one coming up on Sunday against the Jacksonville Jaguars. So we got you covered right here. All right, I'll get to the nuts and bolts of the show again and what's going on this afternoon. Uh, Nobody as of right now, as of this afternoon, has been ruled out for Colts practice. Now, we'll follow the situation with running back Zach Moss because he's trying to come back from that broken arm. and probably listed as questionable i would think and i've said this from the outset i would think that he gives this a go or he he's allowed to give that a go now again i don't know for sure but it just is kind of the way that the colts have dealt with everything right here that maybe he would end up giving that a go but again we shall see i would expect it to be in the neighborhood of questionable for Sunday, and obviously you look at the running backs, you look at the wide receivers, you look at the skill position players, and you know we've talked about it the entirety of the time, and we're absolutely right. Uh, there is not enough support right now for a rookie quarterback entering week number one like this. There just isn't. You factor in the Jonathan Taylor situation, and then obviously at, at wide receiver. Now, I will also tell you this. It's not all doom and gloom, because to me, and a lot of you would agree, is a good time to get the team that everybody believes is the favorite in the AFC South. And what I mean by that is you're at home. I think the last 11 opportunities between these two teams, the home team has won the game. So you got that going for you. You got the fact that you got to go back if you're Jacksonville right now defensively and look at like 13 games of experience at quarterback. That's your tape, like 13 games of tape of quarterback for Anthony Richardson. Uh, there is always that element of surprise or just where a team is and is it. And you got a really good taste of that last night. So if you watch Kansas City and Detroit open up with the Lions getting that win on Thursday night football, I can't imagine that Kansas City is going to look like that. I can imagine Kansas City is going to look much better at some point. Find some weapons, 
Uh, no longer throw it to Tony, which is shocking that he's still on the team. That is actually one of the worst wide receiving games I think I've ever seen. I know, I know that we make a lot out of living in the moment. Uh, you know what? There have to be worse games for that position. Somebody playing that position in the past. I'm just not quite sure there has been over the course of time that I have seen, and it was all right there. I mean, they're celebrating their Super Bowl victory and a packed house in their toilet of a stadium in Kansas City. You get Detroit in there that's trying to earn a little bit of respect, at least did at the end of the year. People believe can be a front runner in the NFC North this year. And really, what you saw last night, and I'm not going to go like all oh, Mike Tirico. Everybody's mad at Mike Tirico for the whole asterisk thing at the end of the, the uh, end of the game last night because there was no Travis Kelsey and no Chris Jones. And as we talked about, I, I, you can look at it both ways. Uh, that's a different game more than likely with Kelsey. I think it's also a different game if Jones is involved. But that was a game that Kansas City just kind of gave away. And the Chiefs just kind of gave that thing away. Now, that pick six was just handed on a silver platter to the Lions in the fashion in which it was last night. But I maintain this. If you're going to sneak up on a much better, a much more productive, a much more skilled team that is ready for the now, and clearly the Colts are not, if you're going to sneak up on that team, week number one with a home game, and again, in the past in which the home team has had such an advantage. If you're going to sneak up on that team, then Sunday could be that opportunity. And I'll give you the third prong in my theory right here. If you follow 107.5 The Fan uh, in social media platforms, you have seen that all of us knuckleheads, everyone, and if I would have known that everybody that's on staff at The Fan was going to pick the Jaguars, I might have changed my opinion. Now, granted, do I believe that the Colts are going to win? Absolutely not. 28-20 the final. Jacksonville's going to win. But if I would have seen that all of our station knuckleheads, from top to bottom, every last knucklehead at our station picked Jacksonville, I may have had a bit of a change of heart. I also tell you this, that's another reason why maybe the Colts have a chance because all of us knuckleheads went with the Jacksonville Jaguars to win. So we'll talk about that as well coming up. I got plenty of tickets to give away on a Bud Light Blue Friday, and the guest list is robust. But we got to get this guy in right now. We cannot go a Friday without the voice of the Hoosiers, Don Fisher. We're going to interrupt his preparation right now for Indiana State and IU, a Friday night game that absolutely everybody hates. Don is forced into action to call it coming up tonight, Indiana State IU down in Bloomington. Voice of the Hoosiers, Don Fisher on the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline. Hello, Don. How you doing? I'm all right, John. How are you? This is a hell of a way to spend a Friday. You can't watch your kid, Coach Edgewood. You got to go right. down and call a game. But I am glad from this standpoint, right? Because we both like him a great deal. I think it's like $375,000 for Indiana State and Kurt Mallory. So maybe they can stop making Kurt mow stuff over in Terre Haute. Right, you want him. Somebody else could mow it with the money that they're going to make tonight in Bloomington for Indiana State. Right, somebody else can mow besides the head football coach. Right, absolutely. We got to get him off a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, and that that, um, and I'm sure you've heard the stories. What what Kurt has to go through over there is a lot. I mean, that is is a lot and uh i know we both like him a great deal and i want to see him succeed but man that is a hard place to succeed so what do you think about your friday night spent calling this hoosier action are you uh, as against it as the head coach of the hoosiers well there isn't any question about that uh friday nights for high school football but we're part of a big 10 com compilation that likes to do everything different and likes to make a lot of money that's all yes, it's they all do. about. So we know exactly what this is about. It's about TV and money. So Don Fisher, voice of the Hoosiers, with us. I know he's in uh, prep time right now. We won't uh, keep him for very long, but I do want to ask you and go back to last week. You know, Don, if, if we were going to talk about this prior to and mention how well that defense was going to play, that had to make you feel really good. But did you have in mind that the offense was going to have such a no-show as they ended up doing? last Saturday no. in that opener against Ohio State? 
I, I kind of thought the first half went as I expected it to be. I figured that they would uh, give both quarterbacks a shot in the first half and, and they would keep it conservative and, and that type of thing. So that didn't surprise me, but you're, you're at 10-3 at the end of uh, the first half. And I thought, well, uh, Indiana's got a shot here. And I thought if they come out the second half and do a few different things that they haven't done yet and maybe put the ball in the air a little bit more than they have, maybe that'll change the thing around. But I, I know that they played it very conservative. I think they, I know that they were trying to protect the quarterbacks a little bit, trying to keep from making a lot of mistakes that might cost them big. Uh, there's no question Walt Bell in the press conference on Monday admitted that uh, he was too conservative. He went up to Coach Allen after the ball game and said so. And and uh, I think they were just they were playing too hard not to lose rather than to win the football game. And and I know they weren't trying to play to lose or lose. They just didn't, yeah. but I know this. They didn't want to lose big, and they wanted to make sure that they kept it uh, kept in the ball game. And so I understand their their thinking process, but at the same time, it's Indiana boys and girls. And if you got a shot, you got to take it. And and I didn't think we did. Yeah, and and see, that's what I question so much because I mean, you, you come. I think he called it like pity pat or pitter patter or whatever way that he went about it. If there is a game where you just go ahead and throw everything at him, but the kitchen sink, no matter what you feel and how you feel about the signal caller, I mean, wouldn't you just have the philosophy, "What the hell, might as well." That's what was so odd to me, I guess. Yeah, and I, I mean, that's, thats again, my thinking as well. So I think mm-hmm. I just expressed that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, yes, I in a very good way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's thats truly what we all – I mean, everybody thought the same thing. And, and I guess the the good that came out of that football game was the defensive side of the ball. That's what that everybody's focused on and how good that defense looked when you consider they only had two starters coming back from last year. Uh, almost a, a whole new football team on that side of the football in, in the sense of transfer portal players and, and redshirt freshmen. Uh, and I, I thought that they did a tremendous job against the offense. Now, granted, the quarterback is new for Ohio State. He's not as spectacular as C.J. Stroud. But at the same time, they've got the best receiving core in the country. And without question, they've got a great running game. So those two things, you would have thought, well, this, this, yeah. role, this defense could get rolled over, but they did not. And that was what was most impressive to me. And they fought their butts off. Uh, there were too many penalties in the ball game. That was the second biggest negative takeaway in this contest. But, uh, I, you know, I was proud of Indiana's players for playing hard, busting their butts. Uh, I just didn't think that the offense was – I just thought it was played too conservative. And give yourself a chance. I mean, again, what do you got to lose? Everybody thinks you're going to lose this game anyway. Yeah, that was that was really odd. Don Fisher, voice of the Hoosiers, IU, Indiana State, in Blooming coming Bloomington coming up later on tonight. Um, about those transfer portal players, especially defensively, uh, who stood out to you? And you had mentioned that you were impressed with most of those guys that you saw out there, especially on the defensive side. What most impressed you about that effort? Well, I, I, they, they did put court, uh, pressure on the quarterback, and that's something that we talked about going into this season, that that yeah. had to be better. We thought it was going to be better because this transfer portal has given them a couple of players that has that skill set to, to get after the quarterback. Andre Carter, I thought, played really well. Jacob Mangum Farrar did surprise me at the linebacker spot. I hadn't seen a lot of him in preseason practices, or I didn't pay that much attention to him, I guess because of Aaron Casey being there, and you just thought, well, that that area will take care of itself. But I thought that kid played terrific, and we had him on our post-game show, very articulate young man from Stanford uh, that got, got here, and he's a he's a bigger linebacker. He's like 6'4", um, and he can move. So uh, that really impressed me. And then I think the defensive backfield, which everybody thought might be the weak link uh, on this defense, I thought they played pretty well. Kobe Minor, I thought, played well. Um, and I, I really think that Nick Toomer impressed everybody. Another transfer from Stanford uh, went out there, and I think he's going to get a starting nod tonight because of his performance in that contest. So, honestly, uh, the defense stood out, I think, overall uh, as the most positive thing that came out of this ball game. And I'll say this about the offensive line. I think it, did, it has improved. Uh, I think it still has a ways to go, but there's no question they looked better last week as well. So that's that all these yeah. things are, you know, everything except for the offensive play calling 
steps up and looks pretty good. <laughs> Don Fisher, voice of the Hoosiers on the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline. So I, I mentioned Indiana State uh, last week, uh, 27 nothing to Eastern Illinois. Uh, that wasn't good whatsoever. They come in here later on tonight, obviously a, a, a team limping a bit, probably more than a bit, I should describe. Yeah. How, do, how do you think IU is going to handle this? I mean, what, what are the, some of the things I guess you're looking for in this Friday night game against the Sycamores? Well, the first thing I look for is to see who's going to be the quarterback. I mean, both these guys are going to get another opportunity tonight. I want to see if one of them step, steps up and becomes the guy. That, I think, is something that the coaching staff and every Indiana fan that watches in, uh, IU football wants to see tonight. If one of these guys will separate himself from the other, uh, it's not bad to have two guys that are uh, almost equal as long as they're equal in a upward side rather than a downward side, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. and, and I don't think there's any doubt both of them have talent, but they're both young guys. They're redshirt freshmen. They have played very little college football at this point, um, and you just would like to see one or, or uh, one or both just step up and be really something tonight. And I don't know if they'll each get that much of an opportunity to do that, or maybe it's the hot hand that will go most of the ball game. We'll just have to wait and see. So that's the number one thing uh, from Indiana's perspective. And then, of course, what will the play calling be, look like here this evening against a team that Indiana fans and pretty much everybody expects to win this ball game and win it in a big way? Yeah, no doubt about that, Don. And next week, uh, Louisville, that's in Indy, and then Akron, and then the Big Ten portion of the schedule is, is underway. Outside of the offense, and you mentioned the defense and your impression on that, what, what else do you, you look forward to? for some improvement either this week, maybe even next week, but certainly in the not so distant future with this IU football team. Well, more than anything, John, and, and we've already talked about it ad nauseum is about the offensive play calling and, and, and the fact that you've got two redshirt quarterbacks granted, these guys are, are young and they're, they're going to make some mistakes. And we all, we all know that and expect them to make, make some mistakes, but I just think you can't be, I can, you just can't be a vanilla team. Uh, offensively anymore because that's what this game has become it's usually a, a shootout in almost every ball game you see it, it's to some degree of course if you're outmanning the opponent uh, it may not be a shootout but in other ball games I mean there's a lot of scoring in football these days and Indiana's going to have to prove that they can do that as well and and this is a football program last year that was not very good offensively and we start out this season with very much the same kind of story at this point that could change, I think, quickly if one of these two guys steps up, and, and depending on what the play call he looks like. All right, Where's Edgewood tonight? Well, go ahead. You know, you know, go ahead. I'm you sorry. Know what? I mean, we're trashing Walt Bell and the thinking process uh, and the play calling in that sense. I don't want to go there. I, I, don't, I don't mean to be trashing him, so to speak. I think they had a game plan. They played it. They did it the way they thought that they could do it and, and stayed away from getting blown away. I just think that you got to change that mindset. And, and I think Walt Bell is the kind of guy that can do that. We'll see if tonight, if they open it up a little bit, and I think they will. Hey, Don, do you think that they were surprised that they were so close, for example, at the half as they were? Because you talk about that game plan and they stuck to it. It was almost like, oh, man, we're right here. We're right here in this. And then they still stuck to what they thought maybe they would be coming from behind a little bit more. I, I don't know. I could be wrong, but that was my thought. Yeah, and I can't answer that question. I just don't know. And, and I, again, I think that I think they were playing it close to the best, basically for the quarterbacks. I think they were trying to make sure that these guys didn't yeah. get out there and become failures immediately. You know what I'm saying? I don't mean total yeah. failures or anything like that. But they just didn't want these guys to lose their confidence. And I think that was a big reason behind the conservative play calling. I really do. Uh, where's Edgewood tonight? They play their arch rival, Owen Valley, over in Spencer. Oh, well, the River Rat game tonight. That's going to be fantastic. <laughs> Let's hope it is because the last couple of weeks haven't been. <laughs> well, well, I'll tell you what, Don. I'll t when I'm done here and then you're done there, we'll just kind of meet with all your uh, Edgewood Mustang faithful down in Ellettsville at the Pizza Pantry later on tonight. How about that? <laughs> all of us. <laughs> You know that this game's going to get over. Our broadcast will get over sometime around. Uh, if it's like normal, it'll be around 10, 30, 11 o'clock. I'm going to bed, man. <laughs> man, you know, you think they'll take down the Pizza Pantry buffet at 10 o'clock? I, I think we all need to get there. Pizza Pantry's well, awesome. 
you apparently know more about that than I do. <laughs> I do. I do. I was just there last weekend, yeah. I was there. <laughs> Made the appearance. That a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I support local, Don. Always have and always will. All right, you I guys you hit the airwaves on the radio network uh, coming up tonight at 6 o'clock, I believe, and uh, yes, 7 sir. o'clock you're underway. Downstairs, 93 WIBC has you uh, for Hoosier football. It's Indiana State and uh, IU. Uh, have, the, have everybody, eh, I don't want to say take it easy on Kurt. He wouldn't like that. But I, I like Kurt a great deal, and I know you do as well. And yes. I so want to see Indiana State perform well. Um, so here's hoping that it uh, at least is a game for a little while tonight. Yep, I agree. I like Kurt, too. I love his family. Ellie's going to be there tonight. Coach yep. Mowers, uh, the legendary head coach, Bill Mowers' wife, uh, will be there, and she is such a special lady. And uh, mm. I think Kurt's sister, Barb, is going to be with her because they flew in from Denver. So it's going to be a neat night. And, of course, they're also celebrating the 86, 87, and 88. Uh, Bill Mowers coached Indiana Bowl teams that uh, – Went to three bowl oh, yeah. games in three years. So that started the trend for IU and Indiana football in one of the most successful eras of the sea, of the uh, of their history. Hey, Don, that means that our good friend Joe Huff's going to be buying in Bloomington tonight. I, I need to get my butt down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got options, baby. <laughs> I know it. I gotta, what am I doing? i got to get down there. Joe Huff's going to be buying. It's a hell of a weekend there. So awesome. All right, buddy. We'll be uh, listening coming up. Certainly on my way home when you guys are underway. But uh, job well done, and we'll do it again next week. Thanks for popping on. I know you've got a lot of things to do. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. See ya. It's a Don Fisher, voice of the Hoosiers on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. Man, when Joe Huff's buying, it's a good damn day right there. Or in this case, a good night in Bloomington. I will tell you this. It's a good night here in Greenwood. Actually, a good afternoon in Greenwood. It's a Bud Light Blue Friday. If you're watching uh, online, Inside the lounge via YouTube Live, you can check us out here. You always want to make sure the camera here is always solid, fellas. You know that. But we're on there, Inside the Lounge via YouTube Live. The stream, the app, and HD radio. So this Bud Light Blue Friday has, I believe, seven or eight pair of tickets for Sunday's game to give away. Our good friend Tony Donahue is here as well. He does something called Fans Place, and they're going to be playing some games and I'm going to let him explain that to you coming up a little bit later on, too. So it's just a part of the fun. But we have seven to eight pair to give away for the Jaguars and Colts coming up on Sunday. Do not go anywhere. I mean, listen, but if you're thinking about going someplace, maybe you don't have tickets right now, this is the place to try to do it. Twin Peaks in Greenwood on a Bud Light Blue Friday. We are looking for you down here. All right, still to come, Bob Lovell, Indiana Sports Talk, of course, week four of the high school football season. Bob will talk about that coming up next. Mike Wells of ESPN Radio is going to be here. We'll go over some of the uh, things regarding yeah, the matchup on Sunday with Mike. Melvin Bratton. Melvin Bratton was one of my favorite all-time collegiate players back in the 80s at Miami. If you remember the transition to greatness that was made. I mean, it started with Howard Schellenberger, but then from Schnellenberger, it went to Jimmy Johnson. And you've seen the 30 for 30s, I'm sure, regarding Miami Hurricane football. But the 80s were the absolute best. Melvin Bratton was a star running back that in 1988 in the national title game tore up his knee. But he has since become an agent. And Melvin Bratton represents Anthony Richardson who's going to make his debut in the NFL coming up on Sunday. We're going to talk to to Melvin about that, about his days as well, and about what he's doing right now. That's coming up at 4.30. And uh, J.P. Shadrick is going to join us, too. Uh, He writes and then does Westwood One broadcast for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's going to join us coming up in the 5 o'clock hour for maybe a little bit more in-depth into the Jaguars coming up here after 5. Dave Chappelle tickets, bullseyeeventgroup.com, Colts VIP tailgate tickets. We'll give those away as well. It's a Bud Light Blue Friday. We have plenty of Colts and Jaguars tickets to give away. Join us. Sign up. Twin Peaks off of County Line Road, the Greenwood Park Mall. In fact, the northeast corner of the Greenwood Park Mall, parking lot is where we are, at Twin Peaks off of County Line Road in Greenwood. It's a Bud Light Blue Friday. Don't go anywhere. 93.5.
93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Hey, welcome back. Bud Light Blue Fridays in Greenwood today at Twin Peaks. Voice of the Hoosiers, Don Fisher. We thank him for jumping on here earlier than usual because of the IU-Indiana State game in Bloomington that kicks tonight at 7 o'clock. Of course, this show and all that we talk about in sports brought to you by this season. Win Schuler's. Win Schuler's in these favorite cheese spreads. And you got to grab some of that and get it in your refrigerator stat. Meyer, Kroger, and Gordon Food Service among the locations you can get in these favorite cheese spread. Win Schuler's. Get that today. All right, we got tickets for you to win here, Jaguars and Colts. So I want you to get here to Twin Peaks and Greenwood, right? I'm going to have Sierra give you a, a social media shout out about why you should get here coming up in, in just a bit as well. Mike Wells of ESPN Radio. Melvin Bratton, the former Miami Hurricane, who is now an agent and reps Anthony Richardson. Melvin's going to join us coming up at about 4.30. And uh, J.P. Shadrick, who covers the Jacksonville Jaguars in the 5 o'clock hour. Meantime, Andy Moore, Automotive Group Hotline. It's always fantastic to have him back. Of course, Indiana Sports Talk, year number 30. The legendary Bob Lovell is joining us now. Hello, Bob. How are you? Hey, John. How are you? Not too far from you. County Line Road in Greenwood right here <laughs> at the Twin Peaks location. Right. So not, not too far away. Hey, size up the first three weeks of this high school football season. It's kind of amazing we're going into week number four. But uh, from, from your eyes and your thoughts, what's transpired most interesting to you to this point of the season so far? Well, I think I've, I've mentioned it more than once, but I, I think it's the uh, you're getting to see Central Indiana teams play teams in the Fort Wayne area and getting to play outside of Central Indiana and see what's happened. And, and I understand that you, if you're in Fort Wayne or, or um, other parts of the state, you look around Central Indiana schools seem to win a lot of championships and so if you want to get better you need to start playing teams like that and so it's been interesting i think there haven't been any real major surprises i think what you're seeing is that you know some teams are already uh, establishing how how good they are how solid they are um but a, a night like tonight is is but like rivalry night there there are some really really uh, big games going on around the state, I'm not just uh, central Indiana, but I'm talking about, you know, down in Evansville and, and all around the state. But I think that you're already seeing that Lutheran is the dominant team that we thought it would be in one a you're seeing how wide open six a is uh, same thing with five a, I, I suppose. And you, you're really seeing, you know, a lot of, a lot of good teams starting to play and do some things. I think you're, you're seeing, East Central, who played for a championship last year in 4A, uh, poised to make another run. They're playing awfully well. So it's just one of the – it seems to me uh, just another great year of high school football. Uh, and as I mentioned tonight, there's some really stellar games on tap. Well, here's one, too, that everybody is talking about, and that involves the number one in 6A, Ben Davis, the Giants at 3-0, and and they welcome in IMG Academy out of Florida, which, it, you know, for lack of a, a better description, is a football player factory out of Florida. <laughs> Very talented kids going all right. over the place right. with D1 scholarships. Um, how do you size up this match? I love the fact that Ben Davis is doing it. How do you size up the matchup with number one and IMG Academy tonight? Well, I, I think it's. Uh, I think Ben Davis has a great shot to win. I, I, I really do. I mean, their talent level is is extremely high, uh, as are other schools uh, in our state. But I think, you know, they have uh, skilled players who can play at any level, uh, and, and they're big and strong and quick at a lot of different spots. Uh, obviously, they play a great schedule, uh, including IMG, but their their mixed schedule is is a good one. So it's great. Number one, we get the national stage. Uh, a plug to our friend Greg Regstro, who has the game on the IFC network, but it's also going to be a, a national broadcast. And so people, you know, they're going to, it's really cool that it brings this much attention to the state of Indiana and the caliber of football that's played here. 
No, I, I think it's good, too. I'll be honest with you. I know that it wasn't the path that anybody wanted, the way Center no. Grove got the schedule in which they did, but right. I like it. I, I mean, I've, I've liked it so far. I mean, Eric Moore's going to poo-poo that, yeah, whatever, but that's just kind of what he does. That's cool. <laughs> Um, but I, I like, you know, they get Moeller tonight uh, down at, at CG. I, I like that right. matchup. I like the fact you really test yourself. And, and this has kind of been a, a proving ground that, you know, Cathedral has done. Maybe not to this level, but certainly have done over the years. And, and you can see considerably, regardless of the talent level of their team in that given year, that schedule making has really helped them out. Oh, I agree with you, John. I mean, uh, think back uh, two or three years ago, they you know, go into the tournament right around the 500 mark because of the schedule they played and they go ahead and go ahead and win. And, and you speak of Cathedral, they have the uh, always great matchup with Chittard tonight. Uh, you got HSC and Fishers in the Mud Sock game. Uh, how, how big is that, quite frankly? And uh, you start going down the list of games, there are plenty of them. Uh, like that, just big time rivalry type games. I think the best game in the states down at Evansville. You got Wrights and Mo- uh, Wrights and Modern Day, uh, and it's a tremendous matchup. Everybody knows it. And you look around here, like a, a Triton Central uh, matchup uh, in two A Triton Central playing Monrovia. Those are two really really good football teams. So there, are, you know, plenty of games. Lafayette uh, West Lafayette and Lafayette Central Catholic. Just you know, get in your car and, and go watch some great football games. Garen Catholic and Burbuff is a great game. So, you know, week four, uh, you're into your into your conference play, and you're seeing some great matchups everywhere. Yeah, it's uh, Bob Lovell, Indiana Sports Talk. has got you covered on all fronts coming up after your games on your way home tonight. That's exactly what you're going to be listening to around the state of Indiana to find out exactly how your favorite team and maybe your favorite team's other teams, their rivalries, are doing over the course of the evening. You mentioned Fisher's. And Hamilton Southeastern in the uh, Mudsock Bowl. Both teams are 3-0, and and it always makes it even better when the caliber of play and the records are as such in this week four for this particular matchup, Bob. No question. It doesn't matter what sport they're playing. Uh, this is a huge rivalry for the obvious geographic reasons. Both teams are are... John, they're capable, literally, of playing for a championship. They're both that good. They're really, really good. Uh, they have some incredibly talented kids, uh, big-time recruits. And so uh, it's always and always a fun game. I love how they uh, how hyped they get. If you're not already there, you may be in trouble getting getting a ticket. Obviously, we know how the traffic is, that particular part of town. So uh, <laughs> if you haven't left, you need to leave now to be able to get in to watch that game. It's a it's your tremendous game. The same thing, you know, Cathedral Chitar. Well, what more do you need to say about two of the most storied programs in the state for heaven's sakes? Yeah. You know, one team that I, I know very well has not gotten off to the start that they're accustomed to getting off to, and that's that's Ron Colley. Uh, Ron Colley certainly lost a great deal from that team a year ago, All right. uh, starting out at one and two. And, again, it's unfamiliar territory for the most part for that program. They'll bounce back. They 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 will find a way. They have they're, they're too good. Uh, yeah, they they played a difficult schedule. Had new new faces in different spots. Um, but tradition is a tradition for a reason. They understand it. They they have really talented kids. And so I wouldn't get too caught up in what the record is right now. I I would take a look at what they're capable of doing in the tournament. And that's going a long way. So, Bob Lovell of Indiana Sports Talk, you mentioned Chittard. Also, Chittard and Cathedral uh, is an incredible matchup coming up later on tonight. Cathedral 2-1, and one, Chittard 3-0. and oh. now, You did bring up um, down in Evansville a team like Wrights. Um, we don't talk a great deal about those teams outside of the area. Mm-hmm. But besides down in Evansville, give me some other teams that have impressed you so far outside of the Donut County area in which most of the time – we're here talking about on a Friday. Well, I'm a big fan of uh, Fort Wayne Snyder. Uh, I love their coach, Kurt Tipman. Uh, played for a championship a year ago. Thought they'd be good again. Uh, they play Fort Wayne South. I think another uh, another great matchup that I didn't mean to overlook is down in Bloomington. Uh, Bloomington South and Bloomington North, both ranked in the top ten in 5A. How about that as a matchup? That, that is a tremendous 
game, and those are two teams that uh, I'm not so sure expected to be where they are. Uh, but that's um, that's that's a great great game uh, tonight. Uh, love to see that my Quakers at Plainfield are playing well. So they've got they got your uh, Perry Meridian guys. Um, so they, you know yeah. really really good games. Um, I think uh, another one that might be trying to slide under the radar is Greenfield Central at Pendleton Heights. Pendleton Heights is 15th. Greenfield Central number seven, having a tremendous year. And uh, Pendleton Heights features. Um, Matt Service, one of his sons, uh, plays a big-time defender, uh, defensive back on that team. And so, um, yep. yeah, we have a little personal interest there. There you go. It's Bob Love, a little Matt Surface reference right here, which is always good, man. That's always yeah. what we get Surface. How is Surface doing? I haven't heard from him in a while. Well, he's doing well. He's, he's wrapped up in football. He's got uh, a son at Indiana State. He's got uh, you know another son playing yep. for the Arabians at Pendleton Heights. And, he, like you and I, miss our Saturday afternoon uh, conversations on that show we used to yes. do. So we're still trying to yes, uh, recover we do. from that. But that's okay. We're trying to have fun. <laughs> hey, you know, um, I, I before I let you. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, if my favorite interview of all time is talking to you uh, in your garage, in your underwear. Yes. I mean, that's, uh, yes. Listen, that's Those time. are great that's days great right there. Right there. Oh, yeah. Great Thank days, you. sir. Now, screaming. so. <laughs> Is he going to watch Pendleton Heights or Indiana State tonight? He's a bit torn uh, with know. Indiana sure, State I'm being sure on Friday. Pendleton. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be at Pendleton watching watching that game. And, and they, listen, they're good. This is a great this is a great game tonight, no question. And again, the Bob Lovell you know, event. I, 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 yeah, I'm sorry, John. I, I'm like Tom Allen. Friday night should be, you know, the Big Ten should be ashamed of itself. Quite frankly, Friday night's high school night. Everybody knows that except the Big Ten. And, um, hmm. you know, it's, 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 it, it should be, quite frankly, a constitutional amendment to keep uh, high school Fridays for football in the fall. And I, have, I, I understand what the Big Ten's doing. They, they, yeah, the Big Ten needs money. Yikes. You need so much money, you've got to interfere on a Friday night in the state of Indiana, you know, Friday night football. You need money that badly? I'll send you a check for heaven's sakes if you need it that badly. But it's, it's they uh, Alex, yeah. I made a few comments earlier in the week. I echo his sentiments, uh, and I, I just think it's shameful. I say it again: it's shameful of the Big Ten to interfere on a Friday night in our state while high school football is going on. There's not enough time on Saturdays for you to do that. That'd be my question. So there's my rant. You're welcome. I think that if they could make the <laughs> amount of money that they're going to make on Friday night, they would play at three <laughs> o'clock on a Sunday morning. <laughs> they don't matter. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean greed no greed knows no bounds, quite frankly. So <laughs> it, it 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 does it it does not. And I, I will say this, and this is with a lot of aspects of what we enjoy about sports. It's gonna be interesting when they continue to, to push the envelope, how far you can I I guess you continue to go with whomever pays you, but you know, when and if that, that level of cash ever runs out, I guess, right? I mean, it, well, it's, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I may be dead and gone by then, but it, it's I think interesting. Both of us will be, and you know, people. One of the reasons people like college football so much, at least the reason they used to, was all of the tradition involved and all of the rivalries yeah. and all of those kinds of things. So you you see that eroding, and I think the other part of it too. I understand money. You have to have money to run your programs. I got all that. Big Ten Network is a cash machine for every one of those schools involved in it i fully understand that i have no problem with that you know I, they got me started back in the year where they bumped the girls state finals at uh in, in high school basketball so they could have the big 10 women's conference tournament and so they literally throw our girls out to bring in the uh, college teams and thinking you know the, the the big 10 does not care number one about the state of indiana and number two it only cares about making money and no doubt about that, and, and I guess my question was probably not framed up as, as good as it, it could have been. You just kind of wonder if there's ever ever going to be a, a ceiling, especially now when you think about it, Bob, collegiately, how right. close collegiately it looks, you know, and is basically professional play. I mean, once that really becomes overlapping, I mean, it, it, I'm kind of curious if sports fans pick one or the other. Know what I mean? 
Because it used to be, hey, you know what? They really care. They're in college. And now you're thinking, all right, so that, that's great. Um, and they're paid like professionals. But I, I'm going to go ahead and watch the best and not mess with the lower level of stuff. It just, I wonder if further down the road there are going to be just some, some, some viewing decisions made by the fans out there. Well, we'll see. I just want, you know, I, I, my big question is having been involved in college athletics for most of my adult life, uh, my question is how long you can sustain the economic model. You've opened up the floodgates with NIL. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about enormous sums of money, uh, television contracts being what they are and how important they are to everything. You know, you basically detonated the Big Ten as we know it just to, to create more opportunities for teams to be in. It. Now you got to now you have to spread out the wealth in, in, in terms of your television contracts. And so how much longer, what's, what's the period of time you can continue to do and use this current model before it implodes? And, and I, I, I'm not an economist, um, but I'd be concerned about it without question. Yeah, I wouldn't know. I just, I, I'm just kind of hoping that I'm still around here once the Colts win again, you know? I'm saying, hey, yeah. it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know you're rebuilding right, right now. You're not right. telling anybody, right. but by the, the way the roster looks, this is a hell of a rebuild. But can you, like, expedite this a little bit so maybe I can no, see some no, winning again no, no. before I'm done? Yeah. Well, how long – what's what's your timeline? How long do you think you'll be around? Oh, well, you know, I'm skeptical about it. There are days when I'm thinking I may have a lot of time, and then other days I'm thinking I may not have another five minutes. Yeah. I, uh, True. Well, I, I wouldn't be optimistic uh, <laughs> seeing the turnaround. Um, <laughs> I mean, ser- seriously. You know, you won, you won four games last year. Uh, I'm not sure you are yeah. arguably better at any spots other than maybe quarterback. And then I would ask you, how often does a brand new rookie quarterback who's played 12 games in college come in and get you a winning season in the NFL? So just yeah, that would be the I, one hell of a story. I, exactly. I, that's why I'm thinking. Yeah, if they win one more, I mean, if they win one more than a year ago, if they win five, I think I'll be impressed with that, the way yeah. that it looks, even with a schedule that it appears to be as lightweight. Right. All right, Bob, Absolutely. later on tonight, yeah. 9.30 for you, 9.30 tonight, tomorrow night, Indiana Sports Talk across the state of Indiana, buddy. We'll be listening. Appreciate it. Thanks, John. Bob Lovell of Indiana Sports Talk. He brought up a really good point to segue as I take a break. The over-under Vegas odds are six and a half. Who out there is taking the Colts? winning over six games this season. Who's got that? I am in the neighborhood of five right now. I've got five. And a lot of my colleagues are going even lower. All right, talk about that and other reasons why you want to get here. If you don't have tickets to the game on Sunday, the Anthony Richardson debut, we can get them for you. You can win them here. Bud Light Blue Friday, Twin Peaks, Greenwood, we are here until 7 o'clock tonight. Do not miss it. Get here. It's 93.5.
for it. Yes, Good night. Thank you very much, sir. 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Let's see here in Greenwood at Twin Peaks if you recognize this voice right here. Who, Paul Stanley? Paul Stanley. You going to go see Kiss when they get here in November? Yeah, you're supposed to get me tickets. Oh, yeah. I We're am. supposed to go together. You Are know you that going was... to Pearl Jam Sunday night? I got to work. Oh, yeah. I they... may do our segment from Pearl from Jam. From Pearl Jam? Is that cool? Yeah, that'd be I'm awesome. I'm going to have even flow in the background. Get uh, Eddie Vedder to chime in. He's a big Cubs fan, though. Yeah, I've you never know, seen Pearl Jam. Before. I've never seen him either. So I'm going. I know you're one of your uh, friends of the show, Sarah, is going to be there. Yes. I, um, She's uh, actually hooking me up with a ticket. There, there you, you go. go, buddy. Uh, the first concert I ever saw was Kiss. Second concert I ever saw was Kiss. That's nice right there. Third concert. You're a part of the Kiss Army. Uh, third concert I ever saw, The Police. That's good How about right the there. synchronicity tour? That is really good. The ticket was $13. <laughs> That Pearl Jam ticket is not going to be that. <laughs> Let me tell you that. My buddy goes, hey, man, I, I need that $13 before we go to the concert. I was like, I got to come up with 13 bucks." That is Hagen right there. We'll come back. Mike Wells of ESPN Radio. The rep for Anthony Richardson is a former Miami Hurricane. You know him well. Melvin Bratton is going to join us at 430. J.P. Shadrick, who covers the Jaguars in the 5 o'clock hour. Twin Peaks, Bud Light Blue Friday. We've got eight pair of Jaguars Colts tickets to give away. You win them here, so get here. County line in Greenwood, Greenwood Park Mall.
93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Welcome back. This is Twin Peaks in Greenwood off of County Line. A Bud Light Blue Friday inside the lounge via YouTube Live. Hello, everybody. Thanks for watching. I'm telling you, if you want to go to the game and you don't have tickets, right? This is a place to be right here. Ice cold Bud Light. You've got great food. Scenic views. Yeah, that's me. Scenic views like Hagen. And you. eight pair of home openers. Week one tickets, the Anthony Richardson debut. We've got eight pair to give away while we're here. So jump on out here with us. And you can also talk to the super dentist. Did you know the guy right behind you in the hat's my dentist? That's the super I, dentist, I did Brad not. Sammons. He has his work cut out for him when you roll in the door. Uh, hey, come in here. Because, <laughs> man, this is a... This is a, just like a Green County mouth right here. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> that mouth is from Green County. I see it. So, anyway. Hey, Hagen's here, by the way. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. Uh, two weeks ago, I was in uh, Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. Last week, I was in Las Vegas. Did you stop by the Unser family compound down there? I was on the Unser uh, Boulevard, or Unser Road, it was called. I went on a Breaking Bad filming location tour. Did you? I, I went on an Oppenheimer tour in Los Alamos. And then I went to the four corners where you can be in four states at one time. Did you go on a White Sands film location? I did not. But I did go to uh, Walter White's house from Breaking Bad. Did I went you really? to Saul Goodman's office. I went to uh, El Pollo Hermanos, the restaurant okay. there that uh, Gus Fring owned. It really is a restaurant called Twisters. Huh. It's a, a Tex Mex place. So I went in there, got me a t shirt, I did it all. It was great. Just a big fan is what you're telling me right here, huh? Did you not watch that? Or uh, I've not seen an episode. Actually, I've seen one half an episode, and they had to get rid of a body in a bathtub for the first time. Yeah, you watch yeah. the watch the first episode, and you'll be watching. Is that first. dude's name Aaron Paul? Right, the actor Aaron Paul. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he plays Jesse Pinkman. Yeah, he was in the. They had, to, they had to get rid of a body. A beloved in the character. Bathtub. Yeah, and he used he used acid. He didn't know that it would go. He didn't know it would the floor. eat the. <laughs> it's all blood and guts. <laughs> he didn't pay attention. The guy said, hey, you have to get in this kind of tub because that's the only thing that can hold it. All right, Hagen's with us. We're going to talk some Colts. Jaguars week number one right now from ESPN Radio. He's our good friend from Brownsburg, Indiana. His name is Mike Wells. Hello, Mike. What's going on, fellas? Uh, Hagen, it's good to see that you're back from traveling the U.S., being out west. I was wondering if you were going to return. And uh, I love how you touch all four corners by acting like your ass was going to be doing a push-up with one hand. I was doing uh, a real push-up. And two feet and then a foot on each of the other two uh, <laughs> uh, states. That was so damn I, fake, Hagen. I know you're, you're, I was your barely, arms are like shaking. Your arms are shaking when they took the picture. It's okay, bro. I was barely tall enough to reach all four states at once on the push-up wells. I had just enough right. arm length. Hey, I didn't hey, you know what's funny? What? You right. know what's funny? Is is there anything more Chris Ballard in the world? What's he got, like 11 defensive linemen and four wide receivers? <laughs> but even more so than that, so now the Colts have the NFL's highest paid place kicker and highest paid long snapper. Is this true? Oh, they just they yes. extended Luke Rhodes. Is there anything more Chris Ballard than that? You know, yeah, uh, the, the, Luke the, Rhodes the is the old... I was going to say, the best Go ahead, Wells. Ke Kevin Bowen's retweet off of that. He said a four-win team from last season gives contract <laughs> extension to a returning player. Because, you know, yeah. they had four, he made the comment uh, well, last week or whatever saying they had four wins. Well, they gave a contract extension to a returning player. And it would have been even more funny if the coach said, the coach, the, they seem to really saying, the coach – I've given a contract extension to dot, 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 and then said Luke <laughs> That would have pissed off so many people had they done that. I, I, you know, they have all this money to spend, and the fact that they have been, in this case, frugal to give their rookie quarterback support here is absolutely mind-blowing. And this mic is from the top on down. This is from Jim, this is to Chris and everybody else, and they're always going to spin it and tell us how smart everything is, and they've got this, this new uh, process or blueprint or whatever. But I'm sorry, in this particular year, 
the way they've handled this roster at the skill position offensively makes zero sense to me, Mike. None. And, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. I, I agree with you on this, Jay. I mean, four wide receivers. But you and I, we've talked a lot of Colts over the years, a lot, a lot of Colts over the years. Um, Hagen, you, we've talked a lot of Colts over the years, too. You sound right now, the way you just said that, you sound as upset, mad, um, not, not, you know, just not happy. But I've never seen you sound the way you, you have and talking about the Colts the way you did just a second ago when discussing their situation. It's like you're like yeah, that stuff you, wears me out. It wears me out. That stuff does. It does. I mean, and and like somebody asked me the other day. Well, clearly you just hate Chris Ballard. I don't hate Chris Ballard, but after six years and then going into this year and knowing what you have and knowing what you have at quarterback and what you're trying to do with a a very early stage as 21 year old inexperienced QB and then giving him. And, and listen, I may be proven wrong. You know, maybe all these guys will step up and this offense will be great. But, again, I'll have to see it to believe it. To get this type of roster makes zero sense. I know it's a rebuild. We all know it's a rebuild. But there are ways to rebuild, and this just doesn't seem like this is good for what is the real focus of this team, and that is your rookie quarterback. I mean, highest paid long snapper, highest paid plays kicker, you know, 11, 50 defensive linemen, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's all the same crap, it seems. Does it not? No, I mean, listen, I, I can't disagree with you on it. It's, they are not – remember last year, if you, you paid attention to the Chicago Bears. I know that this was not – they didn't have a Jonathan Taylor type situation with a running back uh, holding out and everything. But the Chicago Bears did not put Justin Fields in position to have any success last year. They didn't have any – they barely had any talent around it. The Colts are going into week one with very little talent around Anthony Richardson. I mean, listen, the whole week was talking about Zach Moss and running back. Is he going to be able to play? You got four wide receivers. And four wide receivers where there's no clear-cut go-to number one wide receiver. Starting running back is sitting out. You question if the offensive line is going to be able to bounce back out the way. Let's be real. It was a very disappointing season from their key players last year up front. And you got a 21-year-old rookie who's only started a handful of games in his career, period, at any level, about to make his NFL debut. Good luck to you. And yet, Wells, the defending AFC South champion Jaguars are a mere five-point favorite. Yeah. That, to me, is what they call a smelly fish. I, I would, if I was guessing that line, I'd say, oh, Jags by eight, nine, ten, and it's only five, and it hasn't moved. So that tells me... I just say, look out. There, there's something going on. But what, what, could, what could it be, though? What in the world? What in the world well, could it I be? think. Well, you, it, you, it, be, it could be Jacksonville looking more like they did before the end of the season. Remember, this whole Jacksonville evolution didn't happen until the tail end of the season. Yeah, they came that's on. What, that's what we remember the most. But they had some crap water games stuffed in there and in the, the early stages. Well, and what's funny, Wells, is the Colts haven't won a home opener in 10 years. Uh, they they have the roster issues we've discussed, so it would be so much. It would be so very NFL for the Colts to come out and actually win that game. But you know, Steichen's an offensive mind. They've you know you keep it vanilla in the preseason. You you turn Richardson loose, and who knows what happens. But I just think it's strange that they're only a five point favorite. Yeah, I'm 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 sorry. I didn't honestly I did not look at the line because I don't gamble. But yeah, only five point favorites. That um... that's crazy. Yeah, so are you are you are you betting that game, Hagan? No, I don't wager on things like that. I'm a I'm a I'm a pure man of heart and character. Well, in, in the Vegas odds, the over under is is stood strong as well for wins on the season. It has it at six and a half. I mean, it it, it seems like a, a a sucker bet here. It seems like that would be easily under six and a half right here. But why is it held, Chris? I guess as strong as it had. I mean, that goes back. A month plus, does it not? Six and, and yeah, and if, if everybody's betting one way, that line will move or the over-under on the wind up. So it, to, to tell you that it's not moving. Now, uh, six months ago, whenever, whenever the uh, – back when they released the NFL schedule, they released the opening lines for all the games, and it was Jacksonville by three. So since then, it has moved to five. Uh, so, but, but to me, that just seems low. I, uh, you know, you'd like to see the Colts come out and be competitive and be in a close game, but 
Maybe we're all just stupid. No, 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 I just wait, don't know how. Hey, 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 in time out, time out, bro, time out, bro. I love you, man. I, tr- I and I truly do love you, man. You're my guy, hey, man. Thank you. But you Thank said you. you said you would hope for the Colts to come out and be competitive. We well, talking about some grown ass man, dog. It ain't about coming out and being competitive. It's about wins and losses. Exactly. Nobody what my point is, my, my point is, Wells, that I'm saying you would hope that that line is closer to what really happens. Because as I said a, a minute ago, I would have this spread at like double digits. So I'm saying. As a, if you're a Colts fan, you hope that that's, it's a competitive game. I'm not saying that the players are thinking, well, we just want to be competitive. I'm saying the fans that pay money and sit in that stands, they, they, if you told them right now, hey, it's going to be a five-point game, I think they'd take that rather than show up and watch the Colts get beat 38-10. Yeah, true, true. And which, by the way, I, I'm so mad at CBS 4 and Fox 59. I haven't checked it in, in a number of days. Did you, guys, <laughs> did, you, did you guys get your stuff taken care of, man? You know, I've been in some high-level uh, negotiations all day. Well, I don't know what's happening. I know that they, we have stations across the country, and negotiations have been ongoing that they want to get this done before, you know, before Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern time. What are the odds on that? Uh, yeah, 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 I don't know. I just know. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all trying to get me fired out here. I don't know anything about nothing. Listen, okay, I guess I, I, guess I might have to look at another pregame show on Sunday then. Uh, oh, here he goes now. I was waiting for Wells to start stirring up some stuff here. So you got you have Direct TV as well. That affects Direct TV, the Direct TV stream, and AT and T U verse, I believe, right? Yeah. Hey, hey, John, why don't you? Hey, I think we're gonna have to look at another. Um, we're gonna look at a number, another pregame show on Sunday, John. That's what we're gonna do. A different channel. Well, I mean, you, you can listen to mine, man. We'll be there in Touchdown Town, getting everybody ready, so you can just turn on on the radio if you want. I. I um I remember one time, and Mike, you were covering the Colts then as well. One time when the Colts played on Sunday night on NBC, they played Seattle, and there was a squabble between whomever is the parent company of Channel 13 locally, um, and um, and Direct TV, and that game was not broadcast on Direct TV. So I, this would not be the first time. Oh, you're just cringing. We're talking about this, Hagan. I know that, but that would not be the first time that that has ever happened on Sunday. If it does, did he just slap hey, one out of here? Uh, it's deep. Hagan, nope. Hagan, I want to see. I want to see you on a standing on on, on a step ladder next to a Whitlick for the pregame. So that's what I, that's what I want to yeah, see. Man. Yeah. By the way, I was told that you were talking to Joel A. Erickson. I did, and making fun of me for I did standing not. on the box. I don't stand on a box at the uh, stadium, but I do stand on a box when we're in I studio. I said, does he stand on a box next to you? And then I said, if you're next to Whitlick, say, hey, remember that time when you got in a fight <laughs> in the press box with Dave Calabro? I said, both these guys yeah. love hearing that. Yeah, love it. Yeah, at and the and last and preseason and game. Is, you need to ask Whitlick why is he so damn negative on Twitter. He's like, of all the media people, <laughs> he is the worst person on Twitter. He he is horrendous on Twitter. He he comes across like a grouchy old man on social media. And y'all wonder why I don't want to come here and talk to you guys on Friday at four. Why is Chris Willick so grouchy? So crotchety. Uh, Why is that? (laughs) I'm just sitting here watching this Cubs Diamondbacks game. I don't know what y'all are talking about. I'm so crotchety. Wait, what am I, a spokesman? Yeah, a serious question, Hagan. So John and I have given our our win totals in previous weeks for the Colts. What, yes. what do you have? What do you have the Colts as a record for the further record this season? I said, I said right at six. I said six and eleven, so I would take the under six and a half. Yeah, I got, I got, I got them at five. I've got them at Me too. five and twelve this season. Me too. And yeah, does, I, I hey, guess does, my... does, John, does, does Jonathan Taylor play another snap for the Colts? He does. I think he has to. He does. He does. I think whenever he's back from pup, he plays. That sound weird? I know it does, but yeah, I think so. Yeah, and honestly, I think I, I do. I, I do agree with Charlie, and I think it's because Jonathan Taylor is going to get slapped with a slapped with a dose of reality, and learn that hey, he needs to get out there and try to produce if he expects to have a contract. And when I say produce, produce for the Indianapolis Colts, he's going to have to. He's the- going to have to earn that next contract. The best thing that could happen for him, for Taylor and the Colts, is that one of these uh, contenders has a guy go down in the first 
four or five weeks, and then they'll be hungry to make it maybe be more uh, agreeable to giving up something more than what the Colts would want. And then that then the Colts get something back, and then he gets a new place to go. But, you know, you don't want to be watching and, and hoping for an injury somewhere, but those things just happen. Yeah, it's, it's, cra- it's, just cra- it's just crazy that the Colts are in this position where not, not only were they not expected to be very good, he said, uh, but just that the, not, the, the continued drama that has hovered over this franchise for the past few years, if, it, if it's not luck retiring, it's Carson Wentz uh, stinking it up, Matt Ryan stinking it up, <laughs> Jeff Saturday being in a position he shouldn't be in, not a Jonathan Taylor situation. And, and, as you guys look at this, is there a particular fault in the organization for being in this position? Is it Jim Mercer? Chris Ballard? Yeah. Yeah, it's his fault. It's Chris's fault. Yeah. I mean, put them both together right there. That's, that's why we are where, where we are. I mean, you can go over the, the myriad of Band-Aids, the quarterback, um, and among, you know, good decisions they've made, there have been, you know, equally, if not certainly more, bad decisions, you know, trying to win still on the fly, you know, last year was was a circus. Um, yeah, this year so far hadn't hadn't been much better. And, and Mike, what's so funny about this all is the the, the fans around here. I'm not going to suggest they're cool with losing, but I think they understand the situation right now. Let, let me ask you this: but What you don't understand is when you look at the roster and you go, "All right, so how is this going to work for Anthony Richardson here?" Well, That's let me let me important. ask you this: Yeah, both of you. When any of these three things happened, how did you come down? Did you were you for or against this? Do you think it's a good idea? But when they brought in Rivers, when they brought in Wentz, when they brought in Matt Ryan, did any of you, either of you say, "Oh, this is a terrible idea"? I wanted oh. I wanted Rivers for a second year. Right. That's what I, I that's yeah. what I had hoped, and he he didn't want it, and that's what they hoped as well. Right. I thought that would work even if he was old, but that I, didn't. I work. thought Wentz would work, and then I thought Matt Ryan right. would give you a one or two good years. Yeah. I thought. I didn't think any of those three decisions were bad decisions. I, I, you know what? I thought I am not gonna lie. I'll acknowledge it. I thought bringing in Wentz was a great move. I, when Matt Ryan came on board, I roasted the Colts for that move. Fans were pissed at me because I wrote a story saying this is not what this is not a, a chips all all in type move. This is not you're bringing in a guy who lost his starting job, who was over the, over the hill age wise, and Colts fans were so mad at me for writing that. I, I will tell you this. I was on board with Anthony Richardson. I don't know how good or bad he's going to be, but I thought that was the more – that was the more um, – it was definitely a riskier pick, but I think the ceiling was higher with Richardson than a, than a guy like Will Levis. You sit there, and if it works out, you got a quarterback who can run and throw and finally stop – Stop that revolving door at the quarterback spot. So I, I've been on board for two of the last four quarterback moves, uh, Wentz and Anthony Richardson. I hope Richardson turned out better than my uh, my prediction on Wentz working out for the Colts. What, what's ridiculous about Wentz is I think everybody up until the last two weeks of the season were on board with Wentz because you remember that Christmas night game in Arizona. You know, that Christmas night game that they won in Arizona – you know, I think everybody was on board. I mean, nationally, everybody was talking about, hey, the Colts team, I wouldn't want to play them in the AFC postseason. This team is dangerous. You know, look what they did. You know, that was after that pass to Desmond Patman that won the game against the Cardinals. And then, you know, obviously everything just went right in the crapper in those final two weeks of the season. And, and that was more Jim than it was anything else. That was Jim saying, hey, uh, this Wentz guy is not a leader. He's a joke. I mean, Jim wanted to cut him, like, on the flight home. So... That's that's when that ended for him. I the, I was skeptical about about Matt Ryan, but it, it's funny you look back at last year, Mike, and they should have, could have, woulda, but still should have won like four more games. Look how close they were against the Eagles, the Commanders, what they should have done against the Vikings and the Cowboys, and you know here we are. I guess that's how it all has worked. And and really, you go back so far during this six year now into year seven of of Chris Ballard, this has this has been the fortune, and most of the time it's all been misfortune. Yeah, and the thing is, you, you, you've been saying it, that it's not like, no matter, you know, the situation, Ballard bought himself at least another year by selecting Anthony Richardson. 
That that is yeah. a, that is a position. But it, you made, you brought up a great point. What's funny is, and I'm sure it's, it's for all three of us as we go around the city and everything. The, I think the fan base is numb to where the Colts are at right now. It's not like yes. they're getting mad or or they're PO'd about where things stand. I mean, people talk to me all the time about the Colts, and a couple years ago they would be hot about what was going on. Now it's like okay. We're numb, and we just hope Anthony Richardson it can be a very good quarterback at some point in his career. Yeah, I, I would call it this right now, too, and I guess we'll see coming up on Sunday. But, you know, other than complaining about things, it seems like it's a, an apathetic group right now. And that's a spot. We talked about this in terms of the Pacers for how many years. That's a spot you don't want to be in, and that kind of feels – that's why you need just here and there some juice from Anthony Richardson this year. That's why that's so important because that's that's where this fan base is to start the season right now. Yeah, where you at hanging on it? Especially, there, and, there's and a, I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to be funny when I say this, Chris. But where do you stand on this? Especially knowing your station is the home of the Colts, on whether it's CBS Four or Fox <laughs> Fifty Nine. And I'm not. So's mine. Hey, yeah. Where 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 do you where well, do you stand on this? Well, it doesn't matter if you're trying to be funny or not, Wells, because you never are, as we know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think <laughs> you don't want you want the fans to be pissed off, or you want them to be fired up. You don't want yeah. them to be in between. Right. And that's why when I talk to people on the street like you guys do, a lot of them just kind of throw their arms up now and go, "Well, you know that. Well, that's just where we are." And that's why there's so much riding on the very big. 21-year-old shoulders of Anthony Richardson. He doesn't have to go out there and be MVP and win 12 games, but he needs to look like yes. this is the guy for the future. This is the right guy. You don't want to say, you don't want fans saying, well, they're going to have to get another quarterback here in two years. You need him to be showing the signs that he's the guy. You need uh, the sign from Steichen that, okay, this guy is a, a, a beautiful mind when it comes to football and scheming, and you, you need to see something because I do think that Pulse is very – Faint right now with the fired up fan base. They they need to see something, not necessarily based on wins, but based on the foundation is in hey, place. Hey Mike, in closing here, they need something like the Pacers had in December of last year. They need that. They need that type because the Pacers didn't make the postseason. And I mean, hell, everybody's got visions of grandeur now after that one month in December. That is vital for the Colts and their rookie quarterback to find some sort of groove. Maybe it's not long-lasting. Maybe it's very short-lived. But you got to find something this year to keep people interested and to make people believe that you're going in the right direction, much like the Pacers did last December. Buddy, what's on tap for you? What do you got? Oh, nothing. Uh, usual, usual sports. Um, I guess I'm going to go somewhere, eat some wings probably somewhere, uh, check out the game on Sunday because – I got to tell you, I uh, I mean, we, we, we teased about where the Colts are at. I am intrigued to see how Anthony Richardson is during the regular season. I'm looking forward to being able to watch him uh, on television. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to hang up, say it with love. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm intrigued, and I can't wait to be able to watch it on my own damn couch. One of these days on CBS 4 or Fox 59. <laughs> hey, you can get to work on that. Hey, have a great hey by the way, hey, Mike, before you go, we, we got to get Brownsburg and CG on a schedule here in the fall sometime, all right? Yes. Hey, listen, the uh, West, the Brownsburg West Middle School Athletic Director sent me a text after the segment last week <laughs> and said he's going to work to try to get uh, get uh, CG and uh, Brownsburg West on the hoop court this year. I can't wait. Hopefully it happens. We'll even come down. We'll come down to the south side and do it too, man. Heck the yeah. Well, I'm, 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 I'm running eighth grade girls' rear ends off right now. They're running. They're doing nothing but running. It's sprint time. Uh, hey. Hey, are, you, they're run, are they running because you're gonna you, you're playing you're going Loyola Marymount um, offensive side? <laughs> yes, Paul yeah, Westhead. We are going to play a great deal of chaos. It's going to be chaotic, Mike. A lot of chaos happening out there. Love it, love it. Hey, um, Hagen, let me know if there's any fights in the press box on Sunday. All right. I'll, I'll keep you posted. Wells. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Wells of ESPN Radio every Friday right here. Uh, we're live at Twin Peaks, Bud Light Blue Friday. Quick break, we'll come back. Uh, the representation of Anthony Richardson is Melvin Bratton. And Melvin Bratton's story is profound, let me tell you. Just a great collegiate football player of Miami. 
We're going to talk about a lot of that coming up on the other side. Bud Light Blue Friday, a pair of Jaguars Colts tickets to give away while we're here. Twin Peaks in Greenwood off of County Line Road, 93.
live show. See you there. The Ride with JMV. Just an average guy with exceptional hair. 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Hey, welcome back. We're at Twin Peaks on a Bud Light Blue Friday. we got plenty of tickets to give away, so join us here. And this portion of the show brought to you by Win Schuler's. That's Indy's favorite cheese spreads. Win Schuler's. I got it in my fridge. You should, too. Kroger, Meyer, and other fantastic locations. Chris Hagan of Fox 59 is with me. I'm JMV. Thank you for joining us. On the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline right now, uh, you know this name. It is so recognizable in terms of football. Going back in the day with the Miami Hurricanes, of course, when they became prominent, you've seen the 30 for 30 on the U that he also plays a prominent role as a part of. And now representation, and he reps the player that we're going to be most watching on Sunday, making his NFL debut, 21-year-old Colts quarterback, Anthony Richardson. Melvin Bratton joins us now via the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. Hey, Mel, thank you very much for taking the time. How are you? JM, what's going on, fam? I'm good, man. I'm happy, happy to be on the show with you, bro. How you doing? I am fantastic. I, um, I, I go back to the day when you as a player, it, I, I, like, it, was, it was so great to watch the way that your Hurricane team played with that bravado. Um, it, it is still one of my favorite eras all time of college football. I know you get asked about this all the time, and we've seen the documentary on ESPN, The U, but, but still, when you look back at that, what, what stands out most about what you developed as the norm in Miami with that football program then? Well, you know, it's crazy. I'm, I'm down in Miami now. I just flew in today. Uh, we got Texas a and tomorrow, and I'll be with Bernie Kozar, Alonzo Highsmith, Jay Brophy, all the guys. We have our 40th reunion uh, for, for the national championship with Howard Stellenberger. So all the guys in town, I'm headed to a function now. But that era of us uh, playing ball was we didn't give a crap about nobody. You know what I'm saying? We, if, if your grandmother was on the field or uh, in the wheelchair or whatever, we we trying to knock her out. Uh, just our mindset was just totally, totally just, just you know, it was asinine <laughs> to say. But we believe, though, Alonzo and I was five-star kids that, that we, I visited Ohio State, Michigan, Pitt, Texas a and in a private jet to pick me up, and I was supposed to go to USC, Southern Cal, my last visit. But Alonzo and I was on the phone as a high school five-star kid. We spoke something to existence that we didn't really realize what we were speaking. We told each other, like, look, let's just stay home. Miami is sorry. Let's stay home. Let's turn this program around and make history and win national championships. We didn't know what the hell we were saying like that, but we spoke it to existence and we believed it, and we won it in 83, our rookie, our freshman year, and then I ended up winning it in 87, a second one uh, with Jimmy Johnson in 1987. So just be careful what you speak. Yeah, I, I'm a, Melvin Bratton joins us too. We're going to get to Anthony in just a second. I want to ask you one more thing about that. You and, and Alonzo as well, but you were – you were the one that started it all. I mean, you were that first five-star that dropped in, stayed at home, and then you started a trend where year after year you had the best players in that particular area in and around Miami stay at home and play for this program. That has to be about as gratifying as anything with what you started, knowing that you were the first one to begin that. Yeah, how was, I believe in Howard Stellenberger. When he came into my household, he told me he's going to circle – uh, South Florida. So he went from West Palm Beach South and said, "Look, if I could keep all the guys here locally and not lose them, we can we could make something special." And I bought in, and then I looked at it and uh, and saw what he was trying to build, and I just wanted to make the stamp. So I committed early before the signing day verbally. I just told her, and what I did was I told Coach Stellenberger and uh, Coach Alexander, who recruited me. I said, give me the list of the top guys that we're going after. I want to help recruit. So I started calling Jerome Brown, you know, saying the Bays brothers. I, I started reaching out to all these guys, and I said, listen, do y'all want to be part of this? We're going to build something special. Y'all need to get on board. So I did the recruiting myself. So I, I, was go, I would go in to the meeting and start looking at the guys as a high schooler and say, okay, he fits us, he fits us. So And I, I would help recruit. So, that yeah, I was, you know, hopefully, like I said, I wanted to build – uh, so sort of strong that class of '83, that freshman class, is the yeah. reason would change uh, uh, not only uh, the University of Miami but college football. Hey Melvin, this is uh, Chris Hagen with Fox TV here in India. I got a quick question for you. 
Uh, what was it like in, in that 87 season? Because it seemed like every week y'all were playing like a top 10 team. You, there were no cupcakes on that schedule. You had some close games, but I think that added to the swag because you guys were like any team anywhere and we'll take you down, and that's what you did. Yeah, we didn't we we didn't give a damn about whoever. Like I said, whoever lined it up, when we it was the score was seven nothing in our mind before kickoff. All right, we were up seven points, and that's that's our mindset. We went into that, and we just felt invincible. I mean, if you can call it half crazy or whatever you want to call it, but our confidence was so high, and people hated us, and we were like the Raiders, old school Raiders of college football, where they hated us. I mean, we we were like a, a rock star a band. And we would love going, uh, playing at uh, away games because we would go in and, like, we went to Oklahoma and played, you know, saying Bosworth. We didn't give a rest behind about Brian Bosworth. We went in that stadium and we, we started stepping on their fingers when they was warming up, you know what I'm saying? We were crazy. And I look back at the stuff that we did and me calling his hotel, uh, I don't know if you saw that on 30 for 30, that's a true story yeah. for me. I called and woke him up. He's on the front page of my paper here in Miami. That was a disrespect. <laughs> Not on the sports page, the front page of the Miami Herald. I was like, bro, hold on. So I had to wake his ass up and get, make a call and tell him, like, look, you're in Dane County, bro. We're going to kick you behind at high noon at 12 o'clock, so be ready. He, he started laughing. He said, man, Mel, I understand you're hyped up, but why you had to wake me up so early? So it was funny as heck. I had to hang the phone up when I started laughing. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's, that's great. I still have my Miami Hurricanes green corduroy cursive riding hat. I still have it at home. That's one of my cherished hat possessions right there. I, I, I just I think about that time and what you guys brought and the fact that year after year you guys go back and you went on the sideline and you, you know, if you're in the NFL, you expected that next generation to bring it at that level to raise the bar. Man, that's it's special and always will be for me. It's Melvin Bratton joining us. He also represents Anthony Richardson. And Anthony's going to get that first start in his NFL career coming up on Sunday. Uh, how did you guys cross paths here? How long have you known him? And, and then maybe to the indie folks that don't have a great deal of background knowledge yet about Anthony Richardson, what do you know about him maybe that you could tell them that they may not know right now? Well, everything that you have read about him and like even like during the draft process about him cleaning up tables after you know everybody else left. That that goes that goes to credit to his mom and his stepfather, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? The Clear family. Mr. and Mrs. Clear are, you know, they're disciplinarians, they they they're respectful. When I first my, my business partner, Derek Jackson, is uh the is, is my partner. Derek played high school ball with uh, uh, Anthony's uh, uh, coach, high school coach. So we kind of got an in on him before he got to Florida. And then when he got to Florida, he still wasn't on the field. And we went to a couple of games, and I, uh, uh, Derek had called. He said, man, we have a phenom. We got somebody, man, this dude who's spin the ball. So I went to Florida, Georgia game, and he wasn't starting. And he was alternating a little bit when uh, Emory Jones was struggling. So I just happened to I'm, – I'm sitting in the stands. And I've seen this, this player do something so so crazy. And me being a, a talent evaluator, I came from the other side of the world. I was a scout. So I ran five drives. So I knew talent. I, have, I was blessed, to, especially being at Miami. I've seen talent. I saw Anthony Richardson take the ball and go like 40 yards, and he just like mashed that gas and was hauling tail. I'm like, I turned to Derek. I said, Derek, it's so special about this kid. I called my understudy, Morocco Brown, who was, uh, he was my intern. Morocco was now, he was a college director. He's, uh, you know, second, third man in charge, you know, under Chris and those guys. I, I called Rock. I said, Rock, do me a favor. There's a kid down in Florida. I can't see him practice, but can you go check him out and let me, tell me what you think. But I see something. I see, I see a phenom that my partner Derek had told me about. So enough, Morocco was that in practice. He called uh, uh, everybody at the coast and told them, this is like two and a half years ago. So the coast had been on him and knew about him way before the world saw it. So it's just like I said, it was ordained. But his mannerism, when I met him, is a, he said, yes, sir. Yeah, Mr. Mel. And I'm like, what the hell? So I never <laughs> had a player or a kid so respectful. So I, I give the hat off to Mr. and Mrs. Clear. His stepfather also, who's strong in his life, and he just some real. When I tell you, uh, y'all getting a real good kid. You see at, at training camp, 
he tried to stay there and sign everybody's autograph. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of person he is, and you can't get that. There's so many, so much arrogance in the game right now. To everybody's on the fans, the fans are important, and you can't, you can't crap on these people, man. They, they're spending money, they buying paraphernalia, and a lot of people just don't understand that this is it's, it's bigger than football. Melvin, I think it was very big of you not to hold it against him that he was a Gator. Uh, talking to him this week, he he knows what's on his shoulders. I mean, to be just 21 years old, I think he's uniquely equipped to handle all the pressure that's being thrown his way and what the expectations. And as you said, he's he's had the background and upbringing that I, I think he's not going to crumble under the pressure. Well, let me let me give you a little insight too now. <clears throat> Yeah, Gainesville is his uh, home, and, you know, he played high school baller. But let's rewind, bro. The mother is from Miami. She's a Miami, Karen City woman, all right? Mr. Clear is a Miami guy born and raised. So that bloodline came from Dade County. So let's get that correct. <laughs> don't, don't give Gainesville all these props, bro. So he was born and raised in Miami, and then they moved to Gainesville, you know, saying for a better life, and, and, and it worked out for him. So – we're, we're, we're Dade County uh, still born and bred, bred like that. So he got some Miami Hurricane in him somewhere as far as being part of Miami. <laughs> it's uh, Melvin Bratton who represents Anthony Richardson, who gets his first NFL start coming up on Sunday against the Jacksonville Jaguars. All right, I, I'm assuming I'm going to see you, Mel, at the bullseyeeventgroup.com Colts VIP tailgate, correct? Am I going to see you yeah, there? Let me, yeah, let me tell you about my bro, Kyle. So, so let's, uh, real Yeah, quick, I know. Yeah, you, yeah. you better. Because yeah, listen, so <laughs> we met we met at the Super Bowl here in Miami. Kyle, I know you listen. We met at the Super Bowl in Miami, and uh, me and him, man, we went head to head, bro. Because it was a misunderstanding as far as you know. He does a big tailgate, and shout out to Bullseye, man. He does a great job with all the players. So I want to put Anthony with him and, and, and be on his list of uh, star players he brings in every year. So we're we're bringing it up. I had the land across from the stadium, so he got in contact with us the whole deal. Me and this dude, with we, me and him, went face to face. I love him. Captain is an honorary hurricane, so I'm gonna bring you guys some shirts up there. I, I'm gonna go by the store now and grab. Give me your size and text it to me. And uh, he's an honorary hurricane because he didn't take no crap. This dude fired his own mother-in-law twice. I mean, come on, really? <laughs> <laughs> That's a bullseye event group. Dot com Colts VIP tailgate coming up too. Yeah. Hey Melvin, the can- the Canes are a home underdog. That's some disrespect right there. A home underdog to A and M. Bro, I just pulled up at the campus right now. I'm at the Hex Center where, and bringing back memories, I'm, I'm sitting outside the Hex Center right now where Green Street practice fields where we started. I got chills right now being here. We don't listen. This mindset, my college roommate, Alonzo Highsmith, is now the general manager of football operations. Mario Cristobal was a puppy. I played with his brother up under me. We don't care about I'm looking at Warren Sapp right now, standing on the side of the sidewalk right now. <laughs> He's in front of me. And, bro, we don't give a rat. Excuse me. I know I can't do, do the cursing on, the, on that radio, but we don't care about that. <laughs> Text that them. Come on. There's. I visit Texas a and The reason why I didn't go there, because they had no cute chick there. So that's the reason why they didn't go there. <laughs> hey, man, I, I want to see you at Bullseye on Sunday. And uh, is uh, I, I think Anthony's family is going to be there too, right? Uh, yes, yes, yes. We, uh, Mrs. Clear, okay. Mrs. Clear, they're going to come through. They got a lot of guests coming in town. So we're going to come hang out with Kyle. So y'all come through, man. Say hello. And uh, yeah. text me your sizes, bro. So let me go to the store and grab a couple of uh, you shirts for you guys. You, you got that right. And i tell you what, I'd love to get you back on if you don't mind, because I, I want to talk not just about, you know, the player you rep in, in Anthony, but I want to talk a little bit more college football and stuff when we have more time, if you don't mind, Mel, if I could do that again soon. You got my number, man. Feel free. We family now, man. Thank you, guys. And y'all got a great family and, and the Anthony's family, man. And when y'all see them out, they're very humble. And they're going to stay the same. They're not going to be arrogant and cocky. They're good people. So, man, thank y'all for embracing them. You got it. I Melvin Bratton right there. That's awesome. I absolutely <laughs> love that on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Pilot. Let me take a break. I want to come back and mention that. I have such fond memories of his teams at Miami. And now the fact that he reps Anthony Richardson. I didn't know that until Kyle Kinnett told me that. And um, that's awesome. Just so many stories right there. We're live at Twin Peaks. We've got tickets to give away. Bud Light Blue Friday. We'll come back and talk about that and revisit our conversation with Melvin Bratton right there. Uh, Again, fantastic podcast, 1075thefan.com if you missed any of it. 93.
MV. Look at all those ding dong. 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Back at Twin Peaks in Greenwood. Graham's running the show. Thank you, Graham, very much. Chris Hagan of Fox 59. I'm JMV. Bud Light Blue Friday. We're going to start giving away tickets. We have eight pair of tickets for that home opener, the Colts Week 1. Anthony Richardson under center for the first time. The Jaguars and Colts. We've got the tickets for you to win here. County Line Road, Twin Peaks. We're in Greenwood. A quick shout. I absolutely, in case you could not tell, loved having Melvin Bratton on this show. That was great. Now, he can hook me up with, like, Alonzo Highsmith and Randall Hill and all those dudes for that team. Hagan and I were just talking about those teams at Miami were incredible. What a great era. I guess some loved it, some didn't. I just happened to be on the side of loving it. And Melvin Bratton, just by the way, represents Anthony Richardson. And uh, that was awesome, too. Shout out to Kyle Kinnett. I know those guys are all going to Bullseye. Because uh, his fam and, and Melvin are all going to Bullseye on Sunday. Hopefully you are, too. But thank you, Kyle, for setting that up. That was awesome. Absolutely awesome. All right, coming up at the 5 o'clock hour, me and Hagen back with you, too. And uh, J.P. Shadrick going to join us. He's a longtime writer for the Jacksonville Jaguars, does radio, too. We'll talk about that matchup on Sunday with the Colts with J.P. coming up at the 5 o'clock hour. Chappelle tickets as well to give away for next week. Hang on. Be there with us on the other side. The Friday edition, Bud Light Blue Friday in Greenwood. We're at Twin Peaks on County Light Road, 93.5, 107.5.
your entire life. 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Bud Light Blue Friday finds us in Greenwood today. You guys need to get here, too. We got eight pair of Jaguars Colts tickets to give away. Bud Light Blue Friday, the first of a season-long edition every Friday. Twin Peaks in Greenwood off of County Line Road. Uh, this portion of the Ride with JMV is brought to you by Win Schuler's. Win Schuler's, that's Indy's favorite cheese spreads. We'll check out the Win Schuler's spread every Thursday right here on the show. Again, Win Schuler's, Indy's favorite cheese spreads. The 50th anniversary, Tom and Gene. Tom and Gene. Tom was over here a little bit earlier, too. Shout out for their 50th anniversary. That is absolutely fantastic. Hopefully you haven't missed any of the show so far. We have gone from Voice of the Hoosiers, Don Fisher, IU, Indiana State. That's a Friday night affair that kicks at 7 down in Bloomington. Don was with us. Bob Lovell, Indiana Sports Talk, week four of the high school football season. Mike Wells of ESPN Radio regarding the Colts today. They, and this is not a troll job, this is for real. They make uh, Luke Rhodes the highest paid long snapper in the history of the NFL. They've got the highest paid long snapper and the highest paid place kicker working right now. Um, and Jonathan Taylor sits on the PUP for the next four weeks. So that news broke today. We just talked to Melvin Bratton. Melvin Bratton and Miami days, incredible player. Um, and I love the stories from Miami. But right now he reps Anthony Richardson. And we got a lot of great insight from Melvin a little bit earlier. That's something, by the way, I'm going to do again here in the not-so-distant future. I really enjoyed that conversation. That podcast is at 107.5thefan.com. Joining us now, Jaguar senior reporter, editor, writer, also does radio for the Jags, talks it up. A lot of football on the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline for our next guest, J.P. Shadrick, joins us. Hey, J.P., thank you so much for the time on this Friday. How are you? I'm doing well. Good afternoon, and uh, looking forward to some real football for the first time. Week one is finally here, and the Jaguars feel like they have a formidable football team this season. JP, this is a secret interviewer. I've just jumped on. It's your buddy Chris Hagen, fellow <laughs> alum of Hewitt Trustful High School outside of Birmingham, Alabama. I told John not to drop my name on the as we came back in, so I wanted to surprise you. I didn't know you were going to be on the show until we, we hit the last tease, and I'm like, oh, that's my guy. Yeah, uh, it's good. Nice to hear from you. Let's go, Huskies. Uh, the, the red and gray always uh, prevail, and, uh, you know, we'll see if they do well this year. Husky fast, right? You know what they call it? That's right. Hey, before we jump into the Colts-Jags talk, uh, last week you had the call on Coach Prime and his debut. Uh, how exciting was that being down there at TCU? Oh, yeah, it was fantastic for Westwood One. And uh, you know what? They're going to score a lot of points this year in Colorado, <laughs> but they might give up a lot of points in Colorado, too. So <laughs> it's going to be like that all year long, it feels like. Their, their skill players on offense are just fantastic. Um, so they're going to be able to throw it around. Shadur Sanders, so efficient, uh, so smooth with the ball. Travis Hunter is the real deal. Uh, he was open two other times, and, and they missed a couple deep balls with him last week. They've got to clean up some special teams things. That's the, what's the one thing that can get, really get you beat if you don't clean up some stuff. Long kickoff return, had a field goal blocked. Um, so, you know, I see him as a 500 team. I think some of those power teams out there are going to get him. But um, it was a fantastic game back and forth. 1,100 yards of offense between the teams. Wow. Hey, JP, when you look at Hunter, what, what do you think is going to be his side of the football when he gets to the NFL? I'll tell you, that's a great question, right? Because he, he was really good as a receiver and then was pretty good as a corner. Obviously, had that pick right near the goal line, which is just a heads-up play to even think about going over in the flat to cut it off. And then having the ability to go do it is another thing. So he had all that combined. Um, I would be surprised if he's playing both ways in the league. There's, that's tough to do. Um, but right now, it looks like a receiver to me. I mean, it's just the way he's putting up numbers and beating people. Uh, let's see it against uh, some more defenses when they have actual tape on him that, uh, in FBS, you know, a few weeks in. Let's see if they start kind of doubling him or changing some coverage on him and, and how he adjusts to that. But first glance, I mean, he's pretty darn good as a receiver. The numbers he put up week one, I'd take that. 
JP, that's a pretty cool side gig, but your main hustle is down there with the Jaguars. And as you said, uh, so, so much excitement when you think about reigning champs, uh, a, a third-year stud quarterback coming in. Uh, what is the bar? How, what's the fan base down there thinking? I mean, uh, obviously, uh, the sky's the limit, or it should be this season. Yeah, stratosphere. That's what everybody's thinking about down here. <laughs> They're thinking about Las Vegas in February and uh, number one seed and everything that comes with that and a, a playoff buy. And, and so there's a lot of that going on, right? And it's been kind of the Vogue thing the last week or so for some national folks to pick the Jaguars as the number one seed. But, you know, as Doug Peterson told me this week, uh, what, they haven't done anything yet. <laughs> they, they, had, they went to one playoff, and they were a fumble away from not even getting to that last year. In any of the last six games, if anything goes wrong, they're not champions. They're not in the playoffs. So they've got to improve from that, and they know that. So they, they understand. It feels like the team is kind of keeping their uh, wits about them. They're not believing all the hype, at least already. They know they're going to be a good team. They feel like that at least. There's a quiet confidence about them. But, again, they've got to go show it. And and this is a game, no disrespect to Indianapolis, but on paper this is a game that the Jaguars should go win. This is If you're going to own the division, if you're going to be the number one seed, you go up to a place where you haven't won except for once in the last ten trips, and you go beat a Colts team that's undermanned and um, show off on offense and do what you need to do. That's, that's the, the mindset of the Jaguars fans and the Jaguars team. Uh, J.P. Shadrick joins us uh, talking Jacksonville Jaguars and more via the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline. Twin Peaks tickets to give away on this Bud Light Blue Friday, so stand by for that. I, if there were, and I'm going to give you my opinion, and then you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, and then maybe give me yours on this. If there was a spot to where maybe Jacksonville could spring somewhat of a leak, I think it's the, the defensive line of the Colts, front seven, if you will, against the offensive line of the Jaguars and I know a lot with the you know, Cam Robinson has gone on with that suspension I know what they they have liked at least uh, in his replacement so far who's a little bit dinged up but am I right on that if, if if you're able to put some pressure on Lawrence via the defensive line can you hang in that way is that where this Jaguars team JP might spring a leak in terms of giving the Colts a home opportunity well, I'll say this. I mean, when you have two all-pro caliber players in the first two lines of your defense, you've got a shot uh, pretty much every week to do something. And Forrest Buckner and, and Leonard, I mean, those guys are, are all-pro caliber dudes. So to your point about the uh, Jaguars offensive line, Walker Little is the left tackle. He filled in for Cam Robinson late last season, like four games to go, and got better as it went along. And, and they really liked his play at the end of last season. So they're confident in what Walker Little can do at left tackle. The rookie first-round draft pick is Anton Harrison. He's playing at right tackle. And uh, he's, he battled a right shoulder issue during camp, and we'll see how that goes. But uh, he's going to go out there at right tackle and play, and, and he's the guy there. The left guard has been Barch, and he had a, a significant knee injury early last season. And uh, they're confident he's good to go health-wise. So let's see him play in a real game now. Uh, they love the center and right guard. There's no worries about those two. I think they'll, you know, knowing those front seven and the way they can impact a game, um, the, he's not going to stand back there and pat the football all day. I don't think that's the game plan at all. Uh, and you guys know Gus Bradley's defense pretty well. We know it pretty well down here being the former head coach here. Uh, he's going to make you earn it. He's going to make you drive the length of the field and try not to give up the big play. Well, if they're going to give you five, seven, ten-yard gains, take them. And that's, uh, that'll be a step in the right direction for Trevor Lawrence, too, in the maturation process. Can he patiently drive the ball down the field and hit some open guys, move the sticks, keep it going? I think that's the plan. He's, he's not going to load up for deep balls, I think, all day long, unless there's just some breakdown somewhere we, we can't foresee. JP, we talked earlier about Alabama connections, which is a nice segue to Calvin Ridley. What do you expect with him coming back after missing that year? We know what kind of explosive player he was before the suspension. Has he been able to jump right back in and pick up where he left off? It feels like it. You know, his head's on straight, it feels like. He's, he's talking the talk. And, you know, I, you know I, I, I don't want to put a number on what he can do this year because you just don't know. His, his best year a few years ago, he was playing with a broken foot all year and still put up, what, 1,200 yeah. yards or whatever it was with the Falcons. 
And he was so frustrated with it. He never could really get fully healthy. And that's why he left after five games two years ago. And then the gambling suspension came down, and he missed all of last season. It's a savvy move by Trent Baalke, the Jaguars' GM, to, to make that deal and kind of roll the dice, really, to, to see if they can get a one-year rental out of him at least. And at best, you you give up a second-round pick if you re-sign him. So it's a one-year – it's the last year of his rookie deal. So he's mixed in really well with the receiving room. This is a really cerebral group. They are – you have to be in this offense – to be able to move around in this group and play different positions and work with the quarterback and Doug Peterson and Press Taylor, the offensive coordinator, and Ridley fits right into that. He loves it here uh, so far. Uh, let's see it in a game. He's he's geared up and ready to go, and I could I could expect some big things out of him if if certainly if not uh, this week, then uh, very soon throughout the season. Uh, J.P. Shadrick joins us talking Jaguars and Colts. Uh, 13 collegiate games. Uh, there's not a lot to go on regarding Anthony Richardson. The, uh, how much tape? How you know, there's a collegiate tape they're watching. They're watching how Philly played offensively with Shane Steichen as the OC a year ago. What what are the Jaguars watching in preparation for the Colts offense Sunday? All of the above. I mean, you dig back all the way to the Florida stuff. They've said that. Uh, the Steichen tree, wherever he came from, obviously in Philadelphia most recently. Um, and they've been working on that for a while. That's not just a this week phenomenon. They've been building uh, some some tape on him for a while. Um, you know, they, I saw him a bunch in Florida, obviously, and I had a bunch of, game, of his games. And he is obviously an explosive, unbelievably gifted athlete and just big and and thick and fast and a fantastic dynamic player when he gets loose in the open if he's using his legs. He has that huge arm. It's just a matter of the consistency of that arm. Can he stand in there, read a defense in the NFL when things are going really fast around him, and make a throw, a layered throw down the field against a, a secondary and a defense in Jacksonville that was fourth in the league in takeaways last year? I mean, they are ball hawks in the back end. And any little mistake down the field, they're going to get their hands on it for the most part. So can he do that? I think the plan is to, you know, not overrush him, not let him get free, because if he's getting free down the field and running against little guys, that's bad news for the defense. So try to contain him as much as you can. He might get one or two or he's 30 yards down the field holding the football, and, and that's fine. Uh, sometimes the other guys get paid too, right? I mean, they're, they're pretty good at, at football. And if the defense does everything right, he's going to get some. But uh, in time, we'll see. I mean, the, the passing part of it is the question because he was, what, a 54% passer in college. Uh, things are going to move a whole lot faster for him starting on Sunday. Yeah, here in Indy, we saw, you know, a long time ago, 25 years ago, we saw Peyton Manning. He starts from day one. Andrew Luck starts from day one. Uh, Lawrence down there starts from day one. But they had a lot more, you know, college experience at the, you know, power five level. Uh, from afar, when you heard the news early in training camp, they were going to let him start from day one. What, what was your take on that? As you mentioned, so little starting experience at the college level. Well, uh, from this perspective, it was, oh, we got the Colts twice in the first six weeks for a rookie quarterback. <laughs> All right, let's go. I'm sure there was a little bit of that in the fan base. Don't let him get comfortable. Let's, let's get him early and get right. him out of the way. And, uh, but, hey, that's, that's part of it. He's going to learn. He's going to grow. And he's going to be a good player, I think, in this week at some point, if, if not this week. I mean, he, he could flash and do some things this week. There's, I'm not saying he won't. Uh, but hey, that, I think that's the, this is the initial reaction from a lot of folks around here. <laughs> oh gosh, uh, yeah, tee it up, let's go! And uh, you know they got the Texans at week three, so Stroud's coming in early. Yeah, and, yeah, um, exactly. You know, there's rookie quarterbacks all over this division right now. Hey, JP, before we let you go here, what would you learn, especially late in the season, from this Jaguars team a year ago? Certainly, that they can play off of, build on. Because I'm assuming down there that the expectations, the bar is set really high in terms of, of what people are hoping and believing they can do this year. How much did they learn about themselves, you know, what they did once the postseason got here a year ago? Yeah, you know, they, they learned not to freak out when things go wrong. And things went wrong a lot, especially early in the season. 
They had fourth quarter leads multiple times and lost those and lost a bunch of games early in the year. They were four games back in the division. They overtook Tennessee down the stretch because they started to protect the football. Trevor Lawrence made better decisions in the last month and a half of the season. Wasn't throwing it into tight windows as much. He was doing just just thinking a, a whole lot better about the the importance of maintaining the possession and not killing the football team. And, and those those key decisions that were wrong were really hurting the team. And he took an assessment really about the London game, midway point last year, when he threw a bad interception in the end zone on a first and goal at the one. Like, what are you doing? End of traffic. And that's when he kind of settled down. Okay, after this, I've got to, I've got to settle in. The defense got back on track because – they were starting to feel it and make plays down the stretch in these tight games and big moments, and it just kind of carried into the playoffs when, hey, they've come back from all these deficits in the December. What's what's a 27-0 deficit? Well, it's the third largest deficit in playoff history, right? Uh, you threw four first-half interceptions. But, hey, no no panic. Nobody really left the stadium. The, fan, the, the fans were there. The team was still in it. They feel like now they've seen some of the worst – setups for them and they've been able to overcome most of them at least down the stretch that's that's confidence because now you're building upon that with another piece or two on offense everybody else is back and this is a this is a team poised to do some great things jp i don't think you're doing a game uh tomorrow so you have a chance to you'll have a chance to watch the crimson tide and longhorns you like bama in that one at home yeah, it's hard to pick against them at home, right? I mean, they they, they defend Bryant Denny pretty well. Um, it's going to be quite a game, though. Great quarterback matchup. Looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to a Saturday on the couch of all things. Like a whole day of college <laughs> football without any airplanes, no no work, you know, from, from noon until about midnight. Uh, it's all football all day. And that's – that's the game of the week. That's going to be a fun one, and uh, looking forward to seeing what uh, Milro can do at Alabama uh, again this week against a really good Texas team, man. That's going to be a, quite a matchup. Well, as a, as a Hewitt Trustful graduate, I would expect nothing more than 12 hours of watching college football on a Saturday, so enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, I will, and uh, you're right. Uh, that's, that's what we do around here. Um, but it's great to talk <laughs> to you guys for sure, and uh, looking forward to this game on hey. Sunday for the Jags and the Colts, man. I, were you guys in the same class? Oh hell no! I'm way older than him. Oh really? He's yeah, a young, young guy. I, I'm I'm the youngin. He's he's an old guy. I, you know I don't what I don't want to say how old, but he's older than me. <laughs> <laughs> hey JP, was he was he legendary down there? They hadn't built the statue yet when JP was was in school. Yeah, not hey, yet. Hey JP, uh, I know. Re, real quick, JP, John John enjoys drinking Milo's sweet tea. I do, and I've tried to explain to him that there is an actual. That tea came from the Milo's hamburger chain that's only Burger down there in Alabama. Sauce. He doesn't know what he's missing. Yeah, he doesn't know what he's missing. Yes. Yeah, the sauce burgers and the you know, the fries and the, everything comes with that. Like they're everywhere. Uh, everybody he ha- goes jo- to Milo's. He hasn't gone. Like the old, he has the to. Yeah, ketchup. everybody goes to Milo's. <laughs> that was their theme. Yeah, that was their slogan. <laughs> hey, JP, well, I appreciate that, and uh, we'll do it again. And uh, safe travels and enjoy the game coming up on Sunday too, buddy. All right, guys, we'll talk to you again in about six weeks. Have a good one. You got See you, it. JP. All right, JP bye. Shadrick with us. Jaguar's senior reporter, editor, does a lot of radio, does uh, Westwood One radio. How about that? Too. He's on the call of TCU Colorado last week. <laughs> now, tell me this. How much younger is he than you? I think he's like 10 years younger than me. He, I, uh, I, what's funny was I, I followed him, and then one time he posted the so logo. So he's like a class of 97, is he? I don't know. Huh? I know he's younger than me, but anyway, okay. he posted the uh, logo of Hewitt Trustville one time in my high school, and I said, that's got to be. So I direct messaged him. I said, did, did you go to Hewitt Trustville? And he's like, yeah. So we've known each other for a while, and we last year at the Combine, we got a little uh, alumni photograph there together. But yeah, he's, oh, really? But yeah, we, so I go through all the things. I, we, you, know, you talk about all the Birmingham and uh, Hewitt Trustville stuff, but obviously he knows his football and full-time with the Jags. And then on the, the side hustle there, he gets yeah. to go to uh, the Coach Prime's debut. He stays in the South too, right? I'm assuming he lives in around Jacksonville. Yeah, he lives in he lives in Jacksonville. I don't know if he's making the trip for this one. Sometimes he doesn't right. come up, but I think he'll be doing like the studio show uh, back there in Jacksonville. But yeah, as you can tell, when you grow up down there, you you, you know about your football. That's the number one thing. I always uh, got his name mixed up with. Are you a big fan of North Dallas Forty mm-hmm. like I am, right? Mm-hmm. Remember O. W. Shattuck? 
<laughs> oh, I always get O.W. Shadrick mixed up with J.P. Shadrick. Shadrick, yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask him that, and then I had to go to the bathroom and forgot. I held the fort down without you. Did. You. you did a great job, too. I People did. were asking inside the lounge via YouTube Live. Van Pasterman said, hey, man, you got some explosive <laughs> situation work in there. And I go, no. I just and then, had to go take a whiz. And then when you were gone, they made, they made me do three live reads. So. <laughs> they did <make> really. <laughs> Seems like home around here. Uh, you got time to stick around for yeah, a little yeah. bit? Twin Peaks, we've got eight pair of tickets to give away for Sunday. Hey, Tony, are we going to do fans place here? We going to talk that up, too? Uh, they've got something going on with fan plays here, and I want to make sure everybody knows and is aware of that as well. Um, oh, I came to heckle you like you do when I referee. <laughs> yes, good to see you. Well, you know I'm an assistant coach. The, Throw, run him. The, the eighth grade Center Grove girls team. I'm the assistant coach. Yeah, we're going to be doing yeah. chaos. Good to see you, man. You better Thank grease the wheel much. right now while you got him here. Yeah, he didn't throw me out. I got thrown out of a game <laughs> like four years ago over at Brownsburg by the uh, the uh, Pike athletic director. Maybe, maybe he just hates your radio show. No, nah, you know what? I don't think he knew what the hell was going on. That was part of it because I didn't give a crap. I was just kind of sitting there. But now he uh, it was the Pike AD. You're not, gonna, you're not one of them parents that runs onto the floor and shoves a ref, are you? I was actually sitting there listening to the Colts game on my headset and watching my daughter, uh, Laney, and Laney got flipped on a screen, which happens, and it knocked her tooth out. Oh, wow. So she went to the bench, and they were coming down, and the, the official went by me, and I said, hey, brother, do you think you can – I want to make sure I get home without having going to the ER. Is that okay? Can we end? Oh, he got mad okay. at me and uh, got mad at me and ran me. And then uh, this nut athletic director came from the stands, and it was crazy. But no, I, I did not. I did not. I didn't even know what the hell was going on. I wasn't really paying attention, except for the, the lost <laughs> tooth thing. I was paying attention to that. All right, quick break, and we'll come back. Hagen stays. We'll tell you about fans' place and what they're doing here as well. We've got Colts Happy Hour coming up at the top of the hour. I tell you what, what we'll do right now, um, if you're back there, Graham, and you're okay with this, 239-1070. I know we have another pair of tickets to give away for Dave Chappelle. Have you seen Chappelle before? I saw him last time he came through. Is it pretty solid? Yeah, they showed a movie. It was kind of a different kind of show. The, yeah. the coolest thing that happened, though, was when you walked in, they took your cell phone and put in this little Ziploc bag. Yeah. So you can't record anything or you know, find out if there's an emergency at your house. But I, but then I was like, that's genius because if you're doing comedy, right, it, it ruins your routine if somebody's already recorded it and put it on YouTube. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I'm sure this will be more of a straight stand-up thing. The last time he kind of aired this documentary about how they were doing stand-up shows out in this park in his hometown over in Ohio uh, through the COVID thing, how they were still trying to, you know. Because he lives around Dayton, right? Dayton, yeah, it's, it's some kind of yellow place, or I forget the name of it. I've always said I was going to drive through there, but it's a little, a tiny place just outside of the Dayton and Springville area. Huh, pretty cool. All right, uh, Dave Chappelle is going to be here Wednesday. Cambridge Fieldhouse, number 9-239-1070 is going to go on us. Bud Light Blue Friday, we've got Jaguars Colts tickets for you to win. We'll get back to that and more of a breakdown of week number one. Last night, Lions get the win over the Chiefs in Kansas City. We'll hit on that. IU Indiana State kicks tonight at 7 down in Bloomington. Purdue and Vatek coming up tomorrow at noon from Blacksburg. That and more. And the Colts handed out an extension today. If you haven't heard, maybe you want to hang around. We'll tell you who got that extension coming up next.
What did you say? I said, we need a water break. You need a water break. Water is for cowards. Water makes you weak. Water is for washing blood off that uniform, and you don't get no blood on my uniform. Boy, you must be outside your mind. 93.5 and 107.5, The Fan. Hey, welcome back. Twin Peaks, we are in Greenwood today on a Bud Light Blue Friday. Thank you very much for joining us. Got uh, eight pair of Jaguars Colts tickets to give away. I see the uh, awesome Emacs has made it in today. Devin's the on-site engineer. Graham's in for James today back in the studio. Graham, thank you very much for doing what you're doing. Busy show so far. Don Fisher, voice of the Hoosiers. Bob Lovell, Indiana Sports Talk. Mike Wells, ESPN Radio. Melvin Bratton, who not only is a former both NFL and Miami collegiate running back, but also the representation of Anthony Richardson. Talked to Melvin about that and more a little bit earlier. And J.P. Shadrick. From, uh, well, the Jaguars radio network and so much more. Rights for them on their website and all that. JP just joined us again. If you missed any of it, 107.5thefan.com. And you can find that via podcast. Chris Hagan of Fox 59 is with me. I'm JMB inside the lounge via YouTube Live. You can see me as well, Twin Peaks, where we're looking for you on this Friday night. In fact, the fourth Friday night of the high school football season. So, Again, drive safely and enjoy the time if you're heading out to a high school football game coming up later on tonight. Uh, Joining us now, a a familiar voice. Uh, You remember him from this show. Uh, You will know him now from Fans Place. And Fans Place is working alongside Bud Light, doing something really fun and special where you can win. Tony, tell everybody about Fans Place. Yeah, it's like uh, 2015 all over again. Me, you, and Hagen on a Friday. uh, (laughs) There you go. Sports. (laughs) Uh, But, yeah, so we're a local sports prediction app here in Indianapolis. Uh, we partner with local bars here, and we partner with the awesome people at Zinc, who are very supportive of you, very yep. supportive of me. Love That's Zinc. Why we're drinking Bud Light, so we appreciate them. Um, but, yeah, so we, we create these contests when you're inside of a bar here locally in Indianapolis. You log in. We're, you're geofenced. We know where you're at. Um, you can gain tokens by competing in contests, answering questions like, will the Colts score over 20 points on Sunday? Will um, Anthony Richardson have over 40 rushing yards? Those type of predictive questions. Um, we're an alternative to gambling, so we partner with Bud Light to uh, kind of bring money and bring people back into local bars here in Indianapolis and places like Twin Peaks, you know, Kilroy's, Fat Dance are some of our big ones. So, um, yeah, we're doing stuff with you. We're giving away tickets. We're doing trivia at every Bud Light Blue Friday throughout the season. So come out and support JMV. We'll have trivia questions yes. at 435 and 530. Uh, we'll give you tokens. You can turn those tokens in. Uh, for cash back at your favorite restaurants, your favorite bars here in town, local sports card shops, uh, by answering those questions. So, uh, free t- we're giving away tickets. Bud Light's got a lot of tickets to give away. We got tickets to give away through the app. Bud Light's uh, one of our best er, is our sponsor. We appreciate them and everything that Zinc does for us. And uh, we're just continuing to grow. So we're having fun with it. Tony, is this the golden age for predictive interactions like that, like you guys have? Yeah, uh, every, it seems like everybody's. Everybody's into it now. Yeah, I think uh, you look at, like, the, the beer industry, and they're really pushing the non-alcoholic beers, and that's kind of what we are to the sports uh, gambling side of things. Uh, but also putting that money, you still have some skin in the game, but you put it back in towards the local economy, uh, which has been a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, it's, 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 been a, it's a super cool concept. Rory created it about a year ago. Uh, they brought me on in January. We did some stuff in March Madness. We had Connor Daly with Michelob Walter in the month of May doing some stuff. Um, and as you guys know, I mean, especially at 59 and at the fan, yeah. it's Colts, Colts, Colts all the mm-hmm. time. You could talk about them 365 days a year, no matter what, what else is going on. Uh, so this is a big push for us, and we're excited to be partnered with, with Bud Light, Zinc, and, of course, with you at the fan and JMV and everybody uh, at, at, at the station. Hey, Tony, how, how, can you, how can people get to Fans Place here? How can they see this? Yeah, so you can download our app or hit, check out uh, www.fansplace.com. Um, you can check out my Twitter at Tony D. Indy. The link is right there. I've got the, uh, the tweet pinned. If you want to check it out, answer questions, log in at your local favorite establishment where you like to watch games at. We've got tickets, swag, a lot of cool stuff to give away, uh, and you can earn as many TFPs as you'd like. Those are our tokens that you can turn in for cash back at different places here locally in Indianapolis. So, uh, yeah, it's growing. We're having a lot of fun with it, and uh, it, it was crazy, John. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we were at a meeting, and it was like, all right, here's the Zing people. Here's the yeah. the, the 107.5, the fan people. All oh, y'all used probably used to be my bosses at one point. Now let's all work together. Uh, as as the three of us know here, the world Indianapolis is the world's biggest small town. It and, is. Uh, you know, as long as you just keep supporting everybody, everybody grows together. 
That's awesome right there, too. So what was the latest? I'm assuming you had a trivia question to ask at 530. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask Chris Hagan this one. One of the I questions that we had, Andrew Luck's first career win came against what team? They're in the uh, NFC. So it would have been 2012. Um, it would have been Green Bay Packers. Close, same division. Yeah. So they, they kicked off the season. Andrew Luck's first game was against the Bears. They lost they to the lost. Bears. Yeah. And then the next week, they knocked off the Vikings. The Lions. The Vikings. Like yeah. I said, the Vikings. Yeah, the because Minnesota. The Lions, because they were, they the Lions were, was the Donnie Avery game. Yeah. The Lions was yeah. the Donnie. Yeah. Because they were. Uh, we that were was, that were was, you yeah. in Vegas with us? Because Bix and I were in Vegas for that game. Yeah. The that Colts was, were. Sky crazy. point to Bixie, man. We yeah. missed yeah. it. Yeah. They were one and two when Chuck got sick. Yeah. yeah. And in that game, they were playing the Packers. At home. At home. Yep. And, uh, that was the orange glove Reggie Wayne they, game. Yeah. yeah, they they beat they upset the Packers. So yeah, that was I forgot about that. That Vikings game was also a home game. Yeah, that yep. So that was their first. What one. was their final record that year? Four and twelve. No, eleven and five. Yeah, eleven and five. Oh, yeah, the first year. Yeah, yeah. They ended up going to the playoffs. Yep. Hey, would Donnie Avery be the best wide receiver on this team right now? <laughs> Uh, Pink basket close to it. Be. I know Donnie Avery. I, we went to do um, um, open availability <laughs> one time on a Wednesday, and he was he had himself squeezed up in his locker like this, <laughs> yeah. and he was asleep. Oh, yeah, man. it was like you go in here and do all the interviews, and everybody's <laughs> like, "What's he doing?" And I said, "I think he's asleep." Well, so we, we shook him awake to talk to him. We talk about hindsight being twenty twenty. When I was doing some of the questions for the fans place contest today, I was going through some of the picks for the Colts over the last 10, 20 years. And obviously now it's easy to say, and you look back, the guy with the Clemson compared yeah. to going to FIU, but it still shocks me today that Dwayne Allen was picked before T.Y. Hilton. And you look at the career that T.Y. Hilton had at the Colts, and then obviously Dwayne was great for a while, especially here locally. And then he went to New England. Nobody ever heard from him. Yeah, they went, they went Luck. They went uh, Fleener. Fleener yeah. yeah. They went Dwayne. Yeah. They went T.Y. They yeah. went Vic Ballard, Mississippi State Bulldogs. They yeah. go Fleener before Dwayne in that draft? I think they did. Flander I think was you're right. Second Flander was second round pick. pick. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. their first two picks came from Stanford. It was Luck and Fleener. Yeah, yeah. that was yeah. probably a Luck thing. Like he would like to have uh, Fleener around, but yeah. that was that was a Grixon draft. He got Luck. He got Ty Ty out of that. You well, wonder, he didn't get Luck. Jim got Luck, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. wonder if they if they because they brought in they brought in Grixon. That was his first draft. What would the if they kept the pr the previous regime in there? Jim Caldwell. Uh, was it Chris Polian was supposed yeah. to be calling the shots? Yeah. What, what what does that draft look like? What does this franchise look like? Let uh, me ask you, Tony, this. you go at left tackle. Chris Polian, <laughs> special right there. From your guys' perspective <laughs> and what you do at 59, what's the excitement level with Anthony Richardson compared to what we've seen over the last couple of years? Oh, it's huge. Every, everybody, those news goons and weather nerds in there, they're all talking about it. They're excited. See, that's, that's when you know something's happening and, right and that's Jim O'Brien's talking the nerds, about it. You know it's big. The I nerds this, in a TV studio get involved. Put it this way. I think there's a lot more excitement about Anthony Richardson than it would have been with Will Levis. Don't you agree? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I don't think anybody expected either one of those quarterbacks to lead this team to the playoffs this year. But if you start thinking how high is the ceiling, where's the, where's the future, you like the idea of Richardson. And I'll be honest with you, it, it, had it not been for Shane Steichen, I, being here and being the coach, I, they probably don't draft Anthony Richardson. Yeah. No. I mean, he, he's the yeah. one. And, 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 again, Melvin Bratton told us a story. You know about he got in touch with Morocco Brown here mm. and how all that started, but I think that was that was certainly a push from Steichen for Richardson more than it was anybody else because if it were somebody else's head coach, Chris, it may not have been him. Like Bill Parcell said, you know, you, you help, let me pick out the groceries if I got to make the meal. So I'm sure you know Steichen had a hand in that. You know, you're at the combine, you're talking. What what kind of player do you want? Who who can yeah. you work with? Who do you feel comfortable? You look at what he did with Jalen Hurts. Yep. Uh, that's something he he's got a he's got a plan. So I'm excited to see when they when they kind of turn it loose this weekend and and not don't go plain vanilla and see what they have in mind. And so, look at it this way: there's certain plays that aren't drawn up on paper that a guy like Richardson can make and a guy like Levis cannot. So I, I'm I'm excited about some of these maybe not game winning plays, but plays that certainly make the highlights that Richardson's going to produce. Is this, is this the first time? Uh, maybe just since Jacoby Brissett, but this is the first time the the Colts have had a quarterback that can extend the play with his legs and get downfield. Hell, he might be the leading well, rusher. I mean, luck, the Colts this luck, year. luck, well, luck could, yeah. yeah. But, but I mean, luck wasn't. Luck would just extend the play, and then yeah. that ended up, you know, 
not extending his career. That was always a great argument away. of uh, yeah. how long he held the football, right? Isn't that a great yeah, argument? Yeah, it was always a great he argument. Slide. Yeah. He wouldn't slide either. You, you, yeah. Let me tell you what. In terms of holding the football, you ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, because if somebody bre- – when that was brought up with Luck over Luck's era, you have seen nothing yet. <laughs> the football will be held uh, much more yeah. now than it ever has been around here. Well, that's the thing is like – and we talked about with JP. He saw him down in – in Gainesville, he saw him play yeah. at Florida, and he could do things at the college level that you can't still do at the NFL level. And that's going to be – you have to learn that. He's going to have to get the experience of how fast these guys are. Uh, some of the you, – you can't do things against uh, the Jaguars that you did against Georgia Southern. Yeah. It's just not going to work, and that's, that only comes from experience. Here's what concerns me, and this is in terms of, of really all their skill position players, but especially wide receivers. You know, a guy like that with that type of arm is going to try to force it anyway. Being young, he's going to try to force it. But you have a group right now that rarely, if ever, shows they can get any separation or create any catch window, any radius. And, I, I mean, I, I think you're going to see so many deflection interceptions this year from him. He's going to try to force it. These guys aren't going to create space. That's just a really a bad early type of combination for a youthful, inexperienced quarterback. If you have – issues with accuracy you're better off with guys running wide open yeah if you're if you got smaller windows and you already had issues with accuracy and that's just something you're going to have to work through i people have been saying he's going to have growing pains i call them throwing pains and we're going to see a lot of throwing pains as he adjusts to life in the nfl and you know that's why he showed up on his off day and put in eight hours of work he, he's got the mindset of he he knows he needs needs to get better and i think he's going to all right, Fans Place, tell them how they can get involved again. Yeah, don't. check us out, fansplace.com. Download the app. We've got it on our Twitter, at TonyDND, at the underscore fans underscore place. Uh, download the app. Get into our contest. Check in into your local bars this weekend when you're out. Uh, checking out college and NFL games. And every Bud Light Blue Friday with Bud Light, we'll be here with you, uh, giving away tickets, giving away swag with some trivia. And uh, we'll just keep having fun with it. Hey, you think Georgia covers 42 and a half? No. Against Ball State tomorrow? And I don't think did, IU covers did, against Indiana State. Did you tonight. see how Ball did, tonight, did you right? see uh, Kentucky covered last week against Ball State with 8 seconds to go yeah, in the game? I saw that, yeah. Uh, that's I, I think IU does cover and I think Georgia does cover. Oh, 42 and a half? Yeah. That's major. Matt Tone, it's good to see you. Thanks for yep. being involved all season Anytime. long on Bud Light Blue Fridays, right? Yep. Tell Blake T. I said hello. You got it. I will. We'll talk racing That's sometime it. with him. You got it. That's Tony Donahue right there. Tony D. The fans place. Quick break. We'll come back. You're going to stick, right? Yeah, I you're guess gonna, I have to You're going to get a picture taken coming up here at 6. Here's Hoosier Park Race of the Day coming up as well, and we'll start giving away tickets for the Colts and the Jaguars, courtesy of Bud Light on a Blue Friday at Twin Peaks in Greenwood. 93.
And congratulations for the win, the Harris Hoosier Park race of the day. Jada Caroline, the winning horse, 440 on a $2 bet. $2 exact to $5, the 50 cent trifecta, 650. Your Harris Hoosier Park race of the day. The winner gets 50 50 in betting and dining. Harris Hoosier Park Racing and Casino in Anderson. What do you guys got going on on 59 Sunday, Chris? Uh, actually, on CBS 4, Blue Zone, 11.30 a.m., and then we'll have John from somewhere on the planet on Sunday night Maybe at with Pearl Jam. You never know. To me, JMB Takeover tomorrow night, 6 until midnight on B105.7. All right, here's what we're going to do. We'll stop down. We'll come back and do some Colts Happy Hour. Don't go anywhere. We're going to start here at Twin Peaks on a Bud Light Blue Friday giving away Colts Jaguars tickets. That's next, 93.5 and 107.5, the fan. Don't go away.